Quarter century knockoff listeners, we've made it. The knockoff boys are back. Another Friday edition of the knockoff podcast. Never thought we'd make 25 episodes, but we're here. We're still rolling. Uh, this evening, we're bringing you uh, knockoff regulars, Danny and Chris. We've got uh, Filthy Rich from an earlier edition. He's back firing shit on the laptop. Gone back to the interview format for this little Friday night. We've got a, uh, another guest on for you. He's uh, got a strong background, pardon the pun. <laughs> Jason Mitchell, ladies and gentlemen, uh, bringing him on to have a chat about all things strength and conditioning and powerlifting. Uh, pretty impressive resume to date. Got into it pretty early by the sounds of it. Jace is uh, on his resume as the under-16 and under-18 Australian super heavyweight Olympic weightlifting champion and uh, at one point in time held an underage clean and jerk record as well. Welcome, Jace. Thanks for having us, guys. It's a great introduction. Mate, that, that's, some, that's some fucking a good intro, Bruce. You did, you did solid with that, Better. Man. Yeah, better. Yeah, better. I love that. Yeah, wow. That was, wow. That was tight, man. Let's not talk about 24. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I was only um, hearing Briss uh, introduce that then, bro. Junior. Like, what, um, what age is that? Mate, it's, uh, it's changed a bit since I was a junior. I mean, when I was a junior, there was, there was basically three wa- – uh, three age categories obviously for the sport so we had under 16s under 18s and under 20s right, um, right these days i think there's like an under 15s under 18s and under 21s or something yeah and what are the like what are the things you're, you're lifting across like what was that power lifting as well so that was just purely olympic weightlifting funnily enough uh, back in the day when i started there was a, a massive rivalry between the sport uh, but i suppose since the introduction to crossfit it's kind of amalgamated the two and, and obviously brought us all together, um, which is how I sort of converted over to powerlifting, I guess. Uh, not, not through CrossFit, but um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> just want to clear that up right there while we're, while we're on record. <laughs> and g- give it, what's, what is powerlifting exactly? Like what, run us through what exercises sort of constitutes that, that sort of category. Yeah, so ultimately with powerlifting, it's, it's the combination of, of, the, of your three best lifts of the, uh, the, the back squat, the bench press and the deadlift. Uh, it's obviously adding them together. Whoever's got the biggest total wins, basically. For all the bros out there, they know exactly what we're fucking yeah, talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, the, guess, I guess for anybody who doesn't, this, the back YouTube. squat is essentially, yeah, YouTube, but um, the back squat is the, the barbell across the back of your shoulders and squatting down to below, below parallel yeah, in the knees. Yeah. So obviously the technique is, is literally, as you say, the, the bar across the back. Uh, so ultimately across the tra- traps if it's a high bar or you might stick it sort of down towards the, um, the back part of your delts if it's, if it's a low bar squat. And then, yeah, you're trying to, to squat so you're, you're basically your thighs are parallel or, or below parallel um, and then springing back up, obviously. And who, is it like the Olympics where you get that um, – someone goes beep when you fucking got to that, like, depth and no. then you're allowed no, no, to stand no. so up? So that's what or? he's saying, that, like, Olympic lifting was the first thing and, and power lifting, like, back in the day actually oh. had quite a rivalry, but they're two totally different things, so – you, you'll explain for us, but Olympic lifting is like your your clean and jerks, and the ones where you basically see the dudes in the you know in the leotard, they're always fucking Ukrainian or like Russian. Yugoslavian or something <laughs> yeah. like. Fuck. Yeah. And uh, snatch, and it's so it's mm. basically like lifting the weight off the ground up to your chest and then pressing it over your head would be the clean and jerk, yeah. Clean and, and the, jerk, and the snatch is ultimately lifting it from from the ground to above your head in one movement. The snatch yeah. has always fascinated me. Every time, look, I. I don't watch an incredible amount of weightlifting by any stretch, but when those super heavyweights are on every four years when it rolls around at the Olympics, it's yeah. one of the oh. blue ribbon events of, of the games it and uh, super entertaining yeah. watch. It's a bit gladiatorial. It's the fastest movement of any sport, <clears throat> the, the snatch, actually. True, it's, it's, yeah, because it's, it's pure power. Yeah. Pure power. Just completely red switch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got plenty of, obviously. But. Yeah. Have you ever seen that photo of... Um, I'm not sure like what country he's from or, or whatever, what competition it was in, but it's basically a dude who's, I don't know, is there is there an Olympic lift where you do the like overhead squat or is that is that only been like a CrossFit invention type of thing? Because I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure this guy was squat down and basically it looked like he'd blown his uh, intestines out of his anus. Oh, yeah. and, and not only that, but blown it through the leotard. Yeah, right. So there's actually like his, his fucking guts hanging out. Like bust a puff of valve. Like, yeah. <laughs> in the Completely truest sense of the word. Blow your yeah. O-ring and yeah. just fucking spew out your lower yeah. intestine. That's no good. <laughs> Funnily enough, like whenever anybody hears you're an Olympic weightlifter or a powerlifter, the first thing they ask you is like, have your guts ever come out your ass? True. Like, really? <laughs> True. Oh, because yeah. like, you're right, man. You, yeah. You're redlining it, you know, 100%. like at the absolute maximum and, and are you wearing are you wearing belts in Olympic in in like the 
because there's the the raw, as I understand it, which is obviously no suit, no belt, no wraps. Yep. And then there's and then there's like the normal, which it, which is like sort of the belt. Equipped. Are you allowed to wrap, well, your, wrap your knees? Well, so, let's get it. Let's like which mm. which are we talking yeah, about? Uh, Olympic or like, powerlifting? Olympic lifting. Let's go with Olympic first. Well, with Olympic lifting, I mean, it's up to the individual if they want to use the belt. I guess a lot of the guys tend to not use the belt because you know ultimately when you're training, you you don't want to use it to keep that um, core getting stronger. Yeah. Uh, but I guess on platform, you know that um, I suppose you want to use everything to your advantage. But so in Olympic lifting, you can wear a belt. It, when you're lifting, you can. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a bit different to a powerlifting belt. belt. Right. It's a bit li- it's a bit different. It's a lot thinner. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously there's 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 pretty big rules around what, yeah, is there, what you're allowed to wear in, in the sense of the. Is belt. there a stigma around using belts? Is it seen as yeah. like oh, this fucking he's got a crutch sort of thing? Like it's his vice that he's using to because like, he's a pussy. Surely yeah. at Olympic le- sort of level, two, everybody's two wearing them, right? No, nah, it's all really? up to the individual. No. Like I mean. Some people can't lift without it. Obviously, they just don't have the the core strength to do it, um, or you know maybe they're used to using the belt. Or like people like myself, where um, I've already got like you know I'm packing a fair bit where that belt goes, so it's a bit, <laughs> a bit hard to get a bar around a gut and a belt, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so for me, when I'm when I'm Olympic lifting, there's uh, there's absolutely no belt. Yeah, uh, right. But so do you do you tend to lift with them? When, when I'm um, squatting, squatting. Sure, there's there's yeah. a, there's a time and a place for it. I mean, throughout throughout a uh, like a training cycle, there'll, there'll be phases where I'm using a belt and phases where I'm not using a belt. Yeah. Um. So it it all depends on what part yeah. of the training cycle yeah. I'm at for powerlifting. Um. But, but theoretically, you can throw up, or you, no, I think you like you can there we throw go. up bigger. There we go. Bryce has brought it up. Just what? got the image of the uh, <laughs> the dudes. I was, uh, as I was saying it, I was oh. thinking, I was thinking, you know, there's oh. no need to search for this. We don't need to see it. We all know what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, but then good. Bryce's just passed oh. the <laughs> phone <laughs> straight to me. <laughs> I got it from a text from my uh, missus who's sitting on the couch in the studio. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, oh god, you sick puppies! Yeah. <laughs> but you can you can theoretically throw up bigger numbers when you're wearing a belt and wraps and and all that sort definitely, of stuff, can't like, you? Like yeah. definitely, yeah. Like yeah. and and with regards to the wraps, like and obviously with powerlifting, there's a couple of different associations. Uh, so the association that um, that I've obviously lifted for is called the IPF, which is the uh, International Powerlifting Federation in Australia. Our division's Powerlifting Australia, and uh, it's pretty much the only sort of uh, association that drug tests. Uh, and we oh. don't we don't use wraps around our knees in raw lifting. In some of the other associations, you can be a raw lifter, but you're still going to use wraps in the squat. Um, so slightly different rules, but. Um, and you and you mentioned like um, that dr- like drug testing thing. Yep. So is that. Is is that like pro bodybuilding where they they sort of have a, a professional version, or like well uh, a clean version and a you know not sanctioned version? Or well, look, I mean, I think if you're if you're in my association, I think a lot of the guys would definitely probably look at it that way. Yeah. But I mean that um, you know it's in, in recent times it's been proved there was a, a girl from our association who. I'd probably refer to as like the Chris Cyborg of the um, right. powerlifting. Sure. Any, anybody who doesn't know who shout Chris her Cyborg out, is. Shout her out. What's this chicka's name? Cleo Van Wyck. Cleo oh, Van Wyck. Yeah, ridiculously strong. What's her uh, Instagram handle, do you know? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. We can obviously get onto that shortly. At, at Cleo, yeah. strong mofo. Her number though is 04. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Where does she live, man? Yeah. <laughs> who did she buy through? Uh, <laughs> that, that deep web. Like, yeah. uh, and she, she's just clearly on the juice well, is she? she tested positive in our association probably 12 months ago Shit. Um, she's, she's a freak of nature man and she tried to join the other association freak of science as well freak of science and nature yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, more so science okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she tried to join the other association and they uh, and they flat out put a, put a stop on it they were like no yeah. we're not taking you on and I suppose to protect their their name they kind of have to do that like Whilst they don't drug test, they probably don't really want to be seen condoning people taking mm. drugs because that'll sort of take away from what they have, if you know mm. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, like there's – people still in, in the other association obviously are testing positive. I mean, it's, the, it's good to see that what they're testing positive for isn't usually PEDs, like performance-enhancing drugs. It, it's more like you're um, – maybe something they, they picked up from some pre-workout or, or you know, something, yeah. something very oh, okay. minuscule that's – Like a lot yeah. of what you've seen in the UFC, dudes exactly. getting popped for fucking mm. contaminated supplements yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Sure. But like for – Throwing up big numbers. Yep. What sort of steroids are we talking? Because we're not talking like the the stanozoles and shit like that that you're cutting Clean. cutting up with. You're talking like <laughs> your your D balls and yeah, you're talking, you're talking, talking what the shit fuck are you talking about? Like you know the difference between <laughs> I, I, your stanozoles and your D balls. Tell me the difference between stanozole and D ball. No, I, I, I <laughs> purely say that as having never used a fucking mm. steroid in my life. Let me yeah. just say that straight off the bat. But 
the reason that I do know that what steroids do is because I've looked into it, you mm. know, like, and I've had friends that have taken them in the past. I've had friends that have heaps of friends that have been gym rats and did personal training in my young years. I've had a lot of exposure to people who All use right. steroids. So what's the difference? Oh, uh, look, well, D balls and fucking, um, what's the other one? Anab- 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 Anadrol 50 is pretty uh, Yeah, Anadrol and stuff like Sus that. Sus 250. Uh, 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 a Not so much in strength sports. In, oh. Enormous sort of testosterone boosters. Like all of them boost your testosterone, but these ones sort of like are uh, primarily based for bulking and getting very, very strong very, very quickly. Whereas stanozole and, and cutting agents like that are more used for ripping up and like you still pack on muscle mass because that's just an inherent fucking thing from taking steroids, but you stay a lot leaner on those sort of ones. Some people like stack them and stuff like that. Surprisingly, like one of the most um, popular drugs to, that people have sort of failed in Olympic weightlifting is actually stenazole. Um, it's really? Stenazole so that's and more of a like hypertrophy bodybuilding style thing. Is that what you're saying? It's just because obviously the, like the aim for, for Olympic weightlifting or powerlifting in reality is, is to be as light as possible because... Um, you know, we, ha- we have weight categories. Right, there, yeah. There. So explain the weight categories to us. So obviously, um, I'll, I'll explain how they would maybe compare someone like myself to, to say someone like yourself. And it's so we talk in differences again in between um, Olympic and powerlifting? Pr- pr- like it's probably relative for both. Right. Um, so we have a formula in, in powerlifting, we call it the Wilkes formula. Uh, and in, in Olympic weightlifting, it's called the Sinclair formula. And ultimately what it is, it's just being able to compare somebody who weighs you know, my weight, like 120 kilos to somebody who weighs 60 kilos. They're both, they're both lifting 100 kilos. Obviously, the guy who's light is mm. far stronger for pound for pound. And that formula just probably puts a number on how stronger that is. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, when they're, when they're working out, like, who's a national champion for across all weight categories, it's, it's obviously on those, those scores. They Ratios. Get. Exactly. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that's, that's interesting because I've always sort of been strong pound for pound, yep. but I've never been able to – put up the same weights as my friends because yeah. obviously they've always been bigger than me. Well, you, you often know? hear stories from like footy teams and shit that'll say, uh, you know, like I remember as a kid, George Gregan notoriously yeah. was pound for pound the strongest yeah. guy in the in the Australian Wallabies. Yeah. And he was a halfback, like yeah. tiny little dude compared to a, a lot of the big units in that team. But yeah, what weight division do you um, compete at then? So I've um, I'm in, in Olympic weightlifting. I always competed as a as a super heavyweight, which it's um, that's over one hundred and five kilos. Excuse me. Uh, and then in uh, in powerlifting, I've always competed sort of in the one hundred and twenty kilo class. That's from about ninety three kilos up yeah, to one hundred and twenty. And so the dudes that are like holding records and shit like that up at that level, what sort of numbers are they putting up? Uh, the last I checked, the world records in my weight category, I believe, are like a 235 kilo bench press. Uh, the squat's <laughs> like, oh, you couldn't quote me. I think the squat's around 365, 370. Um, and, then, and then the deadlift, uh, like, I think What's it's, a, um, it's up around 400 kilos. Phil, can you tell me what is like a... S- Toyota Corolla or like a Fiat or something like a small car uh, weighs. They, they'd be about yeah. 1,500 kilos, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around that number. Time, anyway. A thousand. It's yeah. yeah. fucking sure, yeah. incredibly like heavy fucking weight, 300 kilos. Yeah. A quarter of a ton bench too, like basically. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows who's, who, what bench press is. Deadlift for anybody who doesn't know is, is picking something up off the ground. Mm. Um, like so essentially the, the bar Bad. is on the ground And you've got to pick it up Till to, to to you're in a standing position So that would be probably where you can pull the most weight Yeah Would look, you say? And, and it's up to the individual as well there's, mm. there's massive sort of like For people who are over 120 kilos You'll probably find that um, that you know it's Height depending obviously You'll probably find their leverages aren't as good So their, their deadlift may be affected by that Whereas they might be a really big squatter Because they've got a bit of assistance From their stomach at the bottom position mm. Whereas in a deadlift the stomach sort of you know, screws around with your leverages a bit and probably doesn't right. give you as, as good of a start off as possible. Uh, I never thought that's, of that. You, you fall into that criteria. You're like your your yeah. squat is two seventy two and a half is your best. Yeah. Yep. And two forty five for a daddy, but two hundred and seventy two oh. kilograms on your back for one rep. And I, I was at your most recent competition where you were pull, like pulling those numbers for one rep at a time. A lot of these blokes were going backstage before they come out and have to do one RM. They were sniffing something out of a bottle. Like, what? What is that? Just cocaine, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> liquid cocaine, man. Yeah. Really confident up there. Just no, nah. <laughs> nah, it's uh, it's ammonia. So it's it's I suppose it's ultimately. Um 
I think I think what it does, you know, probably have to look this up to be honest with you, rather than take my word on this. Do you mean like um, like uh, amyl nitrate type of thing, or uh, no, no, no? I think it's different. It's I think it's got something to do with adrenaline, yeah, um, and and ultimately just giving you a bit be of a like rush. A, be like a popper or something. A- any if you sort, know what that yeah. is. Any sort of well, a- popper yeah. is amyl nitrate, yeah. isn't it? No, I think a- aren't, aren't oh, poppers soda, Same thing. Soda, soda bulbs sort of thing. Well, you just said it's uh, ammonium, so it's obviously not a soda. Any bulb. amyl yeah. on a deadlift, you're fucking. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. Allegedly, uh, yeah. Uh, I would think that that would be <laughs> really yeah. light headed as fuck yeah. from what yeah. I've heard. Well, it's an inhalant, right? Yeah. So it's like it, it thins your. Uh, I'm sure this is something different. Like, yeah, everyone's calling so it a video, if it, if video cleaner. And it's shit. it's a like a performance enhancer. The the uh, no, nah, I think it's, as I said, it's just to get the adrenaline rushing and obviously get you a bit of a bit of a pump sort of leading oh. up to it. Jeez, that sounds yeah. fucking scary. Mm. Is there much of a sort of like you know we, we obviously touching on the on the roids before? Is there is there like much of a sort of dark side to the sport? Like, oh. yeah, look, sure. Like, I mean, in our association, it's sort of it's very much so. If you're going to take him, just don't don't compete in our association. Mm. There's associations that you can compete him in, and, and you can get away with it, and that's not frowned upon. So. Go compete there. And the other thing about with it in our association, obviously, is we're trying to get into the Olympics. Um, so obviously, a big part of that is, yeah. is showing there's you know you're, you're taking a stance towards trying to get drugs Being out clean. of the sport. Yeah. So I mean, you know, by somebody testing positive, it's it's definitely frowned upon by everyone there because you're ruining everyone else's chances there of potentially you know becoming an Olympian. So Good point. Yeah, that's true, and that, that's what they always talk about in terms of people feeling like cheated. You know, yeah. like I mean, and you can understand if you're a Michael Bisping and you get fucking head kicked by Vitor Belfort, and then it permanently fucks up your eye for the rest of your life where it's constantly on the on the lean like that you'd kind of be a little bit dirty sure. too you know yep. like you'd be like this cunt was taking steroids it's the same know? uh i just had a look online and the ammonia that they're sniffing is the same equivalent to what smelling salts would be in boxing so you know you get oh, go, go to your okay. corner you get get a standing eight count in the round yeah. they might give you a few smelling salts so what do smelling it, salts do uh they are they keep are, you from Yep. Passing uh, out. Sm- smelling salts are often used on athletes, particularly boxers, who have been dazed or knocked unconscious to restore consciousness and me- yeah. mental alertness. Yeah. Smelling salts are now banned from most boxing competitions. Uh, they are used also as a form of stimulant in athletic competitions such as powerlifting, strongman and ice hockey oh. to, in inverted commas, wake up competitors to perform sharper. Right. In 2005, Michael Strahan, who is a, a New York Giants uh, defensive tackle, like in- incredible player, uh, estimated that 70 to 80% of national football players so in the NFL were using smelling salts as stimulants. Fuck. Ah. What, you, Eight what, out of 10 What dudes. era? What era? Uh, 05. So, 05. Yeah. 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 Fuck. My only out. reference to that when you just mentioned smelling salts was like, uh, I think, Wake cable up, little guy. snoozy. <laughs> <laughs> smell the smelling salts. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great, great fucking movie. Uh, yeah. Jim, far out. Jim Carrey couldn't power lift. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine he'd be throwing up no. some big numbers. No. Oh, Jim! <laughs> so he throws that mask on. Got the, uh, the <laughs> dash hands are just chiming in on the conversation yeah. there. The intruder, <laughs> Jim Carrey fans. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, what's your like? What's your favourite exercise to train, mate? Um, definitely the squat, and purely just because I like I get a big head, that I can I can squat okay. So ego, 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 boost. ego driven massively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you when you train, sort of just to. For working out purposes or whatever, will you ever? Will you pretty much always do, you know, powerlifting exercises, or will you do, you know, hit fucking bicep curls and you know tricep pushdowns and all that sort of, <laughs> yeah. you know, like beach weight stuff? You got to work your work your accessories too, man. Like, yeah. I mean, there's there's a time and a place for it, obviously. Like, you know, the biceps. Surprisingly, you think like, where the hell are you going to use that? Doing a, like a bench or a squat or a deadlift, but what what it's doing is it's it's holding your bicep there when you're deadlifting. You know, you, you're putting yeah. a lot of tension on your arms there. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, you'd need somebody sort of more sort of well-versed in anatomy to explain it properly. But I have heard that um, biceps are actually like probably one of the most recruited muscle groups in in straight arm things. You think you need to be like, uh, you know, contracting the muscle. But for example, for... Um, like a, a front lever on on rings, like the gymnastic movement, yep. that is hugely bicep yeah, of uh, driven. Massively, man. Yeah, like yeah. I, I think I think people underestimate some of the smaller muscle groups. Yeah. Um, and is, car- is cardio a sin for for powerlifters? Mate, I mean, stereotypically, powerlifters are um, you know they they getting hit with the fat sticks left, right, and center. But um, but yeah, like I mean, into that more modern powerlifting today is is probably. Um, more, yeah, powerlifting today is probably more more like um, 
I don't know. Like, there's people are being a lot more sort of efficient with their with their cardio training and eating a bit more healthy and that sort of thing. Yeah. Just monitoring it a bit more. Yeah. I suppose a big sort of influence in that was like was I, I think personally was people like you know Mark Bell and that sort of thing who were coming out and the brothers. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mark and Chris Bell. Yeah, they're, that's uh, them, man. they're getting quite a um, fair bit of exposure these days. They've been on Joe Rogan podcast a yeah. couple of times and. Uh, They've made a few documentaries and stuff to that. You've seen those? Yeah, Life, yeah. Lifelong lifters, those dudes yeah, are yeah. like, have just and, uh, been through so many. heads too. Yeah. And been through so many injuries and shit. And just for the, like you're saying, you know, the, the ego of it, I guess, or, or maybe even just, you know, that, you know, just pushing yourself type of thing. Like what numbers can I get? It's, it's yeah. easy to get caught up in that. A hundred percent. That man. numbers game, eh? It's yeah, like, it's massively. fun. It's fun when you see like, you know, a couple, couple of like, extra digits every week or something yeah. like that that's, that's what you're there for you, like when, yeah. when, you, when you're doing those strength sports you're there to be fucking strong you know like yeah. you're there to lift big weights but well, well that's what I wanted to like get into next was um, strongman competition like I don't know if you've you know you've obviously seen it before I don't know if, you, if you've had any sort of experience with it in the past but that's a fucking that's a, a crazy game as well yeah. you know Holy talking shit, about yeah. like strong dudes and shit those yeah. guys drag and fucking fire trucks and the Man. sort of events that they have is super random, but just some of the biggest fucking human beings on earth. And I guess we've, you know, probably since primitive times, we've, we've always had that sort of focus on like, Oh, this big fucking alpha, he can lift up a log yeah. and he can mm. fucking do this. Like I want to be like him. Yeah. That, those strongman comps are fascinating to watch. Fuck yeah, they are. Yeah. Especially but, watching yeah. those things. Cause you're right back to what you were just saying then about the, the primal sort of medieval component of it. You're, you're effectively watching a dude tow a truck, you know, tr- strapped to a harness, and you're watching dudes pick up huge concrete balls and barrels and, and shit that you would have been seeing in, you know, ancient England and Deadlift Rome cars. and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Well, you they see are. those old, like, Scottish games. Uh, Highland games. The Highland yeah. games where they do a bunch of, like, throwing logs. Caper toss. Wearing kilts. Sh- shot putters. The Scot- mm. Scots must be good shot putters, surely. Yeah, yeah definitely. The... Um, uh, one of the most like famous strongmen that's ever lived is Marius Pudzianowski, and anyone who's ever into like watch strongmen would know who we're talking about. The big pole. But he's uh, how would he treat? All because he's good in the strongman disciplines. Does that automatically mean that that translates into the gym that he'd have an enormous squat? Like, it would well, I think yeah, because obviously those guys, whilst like they're anaerobic and their aerobic sort of abilities are just ridiculous, man. Mm. Yeah, because they're it's moving crazy. with these things for a long period yeah, of time sometimes, exactly. so it's not just all the power movement. Like. Exactly, and like from my from my watching, and like this is just my opinion. Like you see people like Eddie Hall, like they're they're targeting different things at different times. Like you know, last year and, and earlier on this year, Eddie was just going for the deadlift record, so. You know, he's fucking huge. Like, he's gone from being a 140-kilo, like, athletic animal to being, like, 180 or 190-kilo oh. dude that just wants to fucking lift. He deadlifted, like, 500 kilos, man. I don't oh, even know who that is, but I'm going to have to fucking check that watch, out. Watch the – he's got a Netflix documentary. I think it's called um, – Eddie Strong or something like that. It's fucking. It's just a right. it's pretty good insight. Dude, yeah, Vice have done a few pieces on him. That's right, man. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. an animal. He's like he's. He was a a national, um, British national swimming champion, and then the um, his what? coach told him that you know like if you want to keep swimming, you have to stop working out. You're getting too big. So he was just kind of like screw you up, up the finger and fucking. Yeah, just yeah I think up. Vice did a um, did like a, a food show piece with him. Oh, like Ten thousand calories a day. Like, <sighs> Man, that motherfucker eats some food. Yeah. It's crazy. He would eat enough for like Africa. Like he would eat more than a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, dude. Yeah, a, a Rwandan family. He would eat yeah. like their yearly intake in yeah. a day, probably. He would like, eat the family. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you let him. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I watched is um like a uh, famous sumo wrestler who um fucking they had this thing called Chankunabi, which Chankunabi. is like <laughs> which, we watched that together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like a fucking pot that's that's the you know you could fit two basketballs in this pot and um and it's just full of like vegetables and all sorts of different meat and noodles and shit and like they basically just you know eat this crazy Asian soup. But sumos are another one that they have to be oh, massive, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. And yeah. There, there was a point in time like over in Japan and that 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 you know being that obese and that was was quite attractive. Mm. Like I reckon we fucking. We head over there, boys. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> if, if they're getting laid, we're better. I reckon, to have we, some I reckon we got lost along the way. <laughs> <laughs> we were I on the right path there. Two tickets to paradise. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see those guys? Like, I think they were. Um, there were some sumos in Australia a few years ago, and they were eating at Dreamworld or like some function around there. 
and there was like there was like three or four dudes. You just see the size of this table. It's probably like I want to say like ten meters long. And it's just fucking jam packed full of food, and they left. Yeah. They left nothing yeah. on the plates, man. You, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be a vegetarian or a paleo or anything nah. like that if you were. If you were doing that sort nah. of that sort of sport. This fellow eating the chinkanabi, like the enormous broth, he eats it and he just goes back to bed. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Rest. yeah. They, like, they, man, they, I'm not they, burning this off. Who ties those guys' yeah. laces and wipes their ass? Oh, eh? no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Couple of. But that's the thing, though. That's the thing, though. <laughs> Because there would be Japanese chicks out there that would be frothing those motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. He's he the sumo celebrity. champion of Japan. Yeah. Like, holy shit. But do you He's reckon, so cute. He's do rich reckon, and he'll live till 30. Do you reckon he's still getting his dick sucked, though? Oh, probably not. So I reckon that they, they'd pay him attention, but he wouldn't be getting his dick sucked. Bro, I disagree. He's a I disagree. celebrity, man. I disagree. He's a celebrity. Yeah. How he would, would, I'm, oh, I'm, ta- I'm talking the physical action of it. How would she find that? No, well, he'd have he would one, hold it up have, for her or whatever. Yeah, whatever he'd have he one, to, to, one, Asia, one to lift it up and then, and then Asians another. aren't known for being hung. Well, well, it's, probably going to, <laughs> it's probably going to one of the... Uh, Chris uh, has uh, seen a lot of uh, <laughs> Asian <laughs> men's penises to, to give us a proper survey. Just so, uh, so, so yeah. Are so, they men? So, so, yeah. so, so I've read. But that's the interesting thing, though. Like, because, you know, whatever your... Um, you know, physical attributes are and whatever happens to be the, you know, desired physique or whatever. If you're fucking famous and rich enough, man, it doesn't mean shit. No, nah, like, that's right. Someone's out know? there ready to fuck you. Exactly. For sure, if you're man. the champion of something, there's some fucking, there's some hot chicks lining up. And also, even uh, uh, probably a, a poor example of this, but uh, <laughs> Tim uh, Tim Sharkey, the, uh, the loan shark out yeah. of the Gold Coast, who's yeah. now living over in Thailand. Thailand. <laughs> He's a. Uh, he, he has a, a piece, and it was actually interesting what, what he had to say on this, uh, like a YouTube clip or whatever that he made. Where he has a piece. I think, it was, says, yeah. I think it was Vice doing him as that's well. That's right, yeah. that's really? right. Yeah, he said, uh, he goes, look, I get a lot of people like writing on my all of my social media posts because he's very active on sort of social media and you stuff. You've got to and, do, the, gotta and, do yeah. the impression if and you're would be, do would he, he would be a hell of a guest to lock down on something like this too, don't get me wrong. Shout out, brother. Nothing yeah. but love. Exactly. Come on the yeah. TKO. Straight we'll, up. We'll fucking definitely. He makes a valid point. He's like... Jam. Everyone here is on my social media judging me over these posts about these women that are just working here for an honest dollar. He's like, they're making a living to send money back to their families back in the villages and stuff like that. He goes, I owned, stri- I owned uh, a few pubs on the Gold Coast. He goes, I'd have chicks that would come and suck my dick for a fucking free cover charge and a drink voucher. Yeah. Like that. You're like, yeah, okay, I kind of, <laughs> kind of see where you're coming from and, here a little and there's, bit. And there's absolutely that argument because, like, I've def- I've worked in the fly and fly out industry, and there's a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot of people that have mail orders, you know, like in in that sort of industry, and a mail order bride, yeah, mail order bride, exactly, and and that. That's servicing a need for both parties, you know. Like I'm not condoning the creepy shit of, you know, like I mean, some fifty or sixty year old dude with a twenty year old. Like that, that's just weird. Everyone knows that's weird. But the idea of having, you know, somebody who's obviously got some means to provide a better life for another individual, and you've got an individual that is looking for love and somebody to take care of them and all that sort of stuff and it's just mutually beneficial yeah 60 minutes did a piece on that and it was um they basically you know followed around a bunch of fifo guys that had uh been in contact with a few different agencies in different countries but i think the ukraine and eastern europe is another big one sort of like definitely southeast asia is one but also the ukraine and they were showing these sort of events that like you know different you know tinder type matchmaker people will will hold where there's you know all of the all of the women that have signed up and all of the men and they can mingle it's like and a pool party sort of stuff event. yeah yeah, yeah. Ah. but yeah i mean there's all there's all degrees of it we have fucking however many people we have on the planet now so it's it's probably you know it's a numbers thing mm. it's you know you're not going to necessarily find a suitable applicant like meeting everybody yeah. I- in real life particularly if your job means that you go out into the fucking outback australia and don't see women for months on end exactly. you know? it's, not, it's not even just for those guys though and like I, I get a bit annoyed at some of the um some blokes you sort of i guess i'm guilty of it as well as soon as you see a guy with with an asian girl the first thing you're thinking is like is like male order bride yeah. or something. well the Could thing be. is there is a stigma there is a that. massive stigma and like i've got a good friend of mine who's in his 60s you know and, and he married married a um a filipino bird like 35 years ago and he just says it's just frustrating walking around in the streets you can just see every single yeah, person you walk yeah. past. yeah but that's he's got to let that shit go you know like yeah, pe- people hold fucking opinions about absolutely everything so if you walk around your whole life considering what opinions everybody 
else has of you. You never fucking live your life. Sure. So, like, you know, the the whole sort of mail order, inverted, inverted commas type of thing would exist. But the other thing is, like you're saying, mutual benefit. Um, I just recently returned from Malaysia and, um, and my... Uh, my girlfriend's um, mom is actually an expat there and I was talking to her about it and she's, you know, like it's as much of a win for the Asian women. Like mm. if there's a green, uh, like a gringo or, you know, a falang or oh. w- white person that comes into, into the restaurant or into the bar or whatever and he's, you know, wealthy dude from from place that's that's not impoverished and all that sort of stuff, and he's got a, you know, decent intelligence on him and stuff like that. That's a catch for them. It's not like age isn't necessarily a thing for them. They're they're and they're not necessarily just looking for you know, a ticket out of that situation. But you know, oftentimes relationships are a matter of like, okay, what's what's you know what benefits do we both get from this relationship do they outweigh the negative aspects of this relationship there's you know particularly as a man you sort of approach things pragmatically and sort of like you know you've got to you got to appeal to a need you know like i mean and, and everyone's needs are different you know somebody some people have needs which are orientated towards you know aesthetics and somebody is like no i'm prepared to put up with a dickhead if i can just get somebody who's you know, a 10 out of 10 smoke show that, that looks good on my arm. But then yeah. exactly like you're saying, man, you know, there, there's, you know, c- cultures and, and people out there that, you know, don't really, the looks are, are very almost inconsequential, you know, and, and the, the real need that they're getting serviced is, is you know, dependency and is someone to look after them and someone to provide for their family and nurture them and all that sort of stuff. And, and they're happy to see them every one every month and you know clean their clothes and you know shag yeah. and i mean <laughs> ultimate ultimately relationships and like if you want to break it down to We've got, got some, some people uh, out on the street. We've got dying. some strange <laughs> noises going outside the studio. I thought somebody's phone was ringing, but... Uh, Stop the TKO. <laughs> Stop the TKO. <laughs> I think there's a domestic yeah. going on next yeah, door, so p- pay no mind. But uh, what I was going to say is like, you know, relationships, if you, if you broke it down to a um, biological thing, like basically it's all about like, caring for another person and having somebody care for you because the you know the human organism is actually better off like in a in a partnership than it is kind of on its own like in nature and shit like that so you know however that sort of you know exists for you and and whatever sort of you know interracial interage into into anything sort of make up that is like it's it's you know it's serving a, a basic human function and some relationships aren't e- like aren't even necessarily sexual and it's just mutually like you know you might have i worked with this old lady who was you know unmarried and in her mid-60s looking to retire and she lived with another woman of the of the same situation i don't think they were lesbians but you know in a way they're kind of like partners and they have a partnership type of thing like sure there's a lot of different levels of it but um mates it's really interesting like i was talking to a guy from um from india from punjab a couple of years ago there and he went home for for an organized marriage and and to me that was to me that was kind of just like that's another cultural thing there. yeah Yeah. like like to me it's like it's obviously it's 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 fine but like um it was it was just i wanted to understand it more and I i sort of started questioning about it and then it's sort of he's coming out like sort of saying like yeah I don't like I've met her before I'm going over there to marry mm-hmm. her I don't love her yet but like I'll learn to love her yeah and, and it's like that kind of thing and then you start thinking like like how the fuck is this gonna work but you look at some of the statistics like I don't have any numbers maybe Phil can dig them out but like <laughs> <laughs> Phil's half asleep in his chair <laughs> he's not doing a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you, you look at like the I'm sure if you looked at the percentages of like Western marriages and how many worked out and compared them with like with something like a like the Indian like organized marriage and, and see how many of them work out like I'm pretty and, sure it'll blow your and mind. It's, <laughs> it's totally totally based on what you know. Like what you know is the traditional or social norm that you were brought up with, That's that right. your parents were, that all of these sort of different little social things that have gone on in your life that you're like, this is perfectly normal. What you have to do is you have to meet someone and you have to like, you know, judge them based on this and that. And mm. for somebody in India, it's not like that. They yeah. grow up with arranged marriage and it's like, oh no, no, no. Well, your parents decide because, you know, they know what's best for two families that are going to meet for these Definitely. mutual like, you know, benefits, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's like us. and then and then you go to fucking wherever else, like ancient Greece. It's like, you know, f- like the norm for me- like older men to have sexual yeah. relationships with younger men and shit. But w- fortunately, we're in a place now where we 
you know, understand the human psyche more that we fucking like know what's right and what's wrong when it comes to relationships. Yeah. And, and we have, you know, legal age of consent, I think is a fairly, you know, unanimous thing that most people can agree on. Like there's, you know, I, I guess we're cool with, I guess by legal consent, we're saying we're cool with a 70, 70 year old being with a 17 year old, which is like, don't know if I agree with that, but, uh, Obviously, you're not going to find many of those situations. You're not going to find a willing 17-year-old. I think there's like a legal, you know, acceptability and then there's an ethical acceptability to it. Something that uh, Ben McCormack (laughs) has allegedly chosen to (laughs) ignore. Seamless. Seamless. (laughs) Oh, shit. Uh, Hit me with the short ball. I just ran through the hole. (laughs) 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 No, but it's it's alleged. Explain it for anybody who doesn't know that name. As we've said, for all the uh, international listeners in their their tens of thousands. uh, (laughs) What up? A current affair is a uh, a look. It's held for anyone here who's who's interested in Australia in like reasonable and credible news. It's not the program for you. It's just sort of (laughs) gut gut of journalism, essentially talking about the neighbours from hell. And it's like a yeah, it's like a trash magazine on TV. Exactly right. And uh, waiting room magazine. One of the most controversial uh, journalists on there is only is a young bloke by the name of Ben McCormack and he is he's not young I think no, he's, he's pretty, fucking 40s or 50s he's, oh no, he's, he's not 50 in, he's yeah, in, he's in, in his 40s is he in the 40s okay. I think so he's one of the older ones there right uh, yeah, so he's uh, he's young if you're he's, 100 yeah that's right <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. for all our 100 Super year old young. listeners out there yeah. Yeah. he ain't hooking up with any 100 year old yeah. he, <laughs> allegedly he's uh, he's been one of these journalists too that's always just taking like the controversial line and uh, there was a a previous case in Australia with a, another TV celebrity who was an actor who was a pedophile, uh, convicted, charged, sentenced. He's away. Guilt, guilty as sin. Who? Uh, Robert Hughes, the, the guy from, guy hey from Dad. a TV oh, program right. called Did Hey Dad. Did he do the report on it? He was the dude that chased him hard and rode him over it, rode him over it and Holy grilled him. Ch- like, grilled ch- him. Shit. Chased him to Bangkok, if I if I yeah, recall correctly. He had. He he wouldn't let it go. Just wouldn't let it I go. Didn't was, know that, yeah, it was yeah. in his face. And Reality it turns is out, stranger than fiction. Uh, that this guy here, Ben McCormack, a 25 year journalist, he, he is 42, has, was arrested on his way to work uh, this weekend. Oh, the, during this week and had his computer seized with over what's been alleged as a terabyte of child pornography. It's so much fucking data, you know. Mm. For anybody that doesn't know data, that's a fuckload of movies, you know. Like, mm. Jesus, how many, how many, Phil, how many fucking movies would that be? Jeez. I don't even know anybody, anybody who's got like a that's terabyte like of legit porn. No, <laughs> that's right. I, I, I have a terabyte hard drive full of every years. bit of content I've ever owned and it touches about a third of it. Yeah. So to get – was, apparently it was said that he was talking uh, talking online to, a, to another pedo about uh, – uh, like explicit text messages about young boys and things like that. So I'm not I'm not sure what age bracket we're talking about, but it doesn't matter. If you've got a terabyte of data, there's going to be some really crooked shit on there. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, obviously innocent until proven guilty, but it looks like the writing's firmly on the wall yeah, for this yeah. bike. Imagine, mm. imagine that when, when slash if he gets done and, you know, walking into prison – on, on yeah. that first mm. day, man. Yeah, your I life think that's, is fucked. And I you, think know that's, um, you know it. You know it. More your ass, I think. Hey, you kind of <laughs> you, you need to kill yourself. I know that sounds awful, but you kind of do need to. I yeah, would, well, I would. anybody who's seen the uh, the Louis Theroux on um, pedophiles in uh, in one of the American prisons, it's, it's fucking pretty, pretty gnarly. Like... Mm. And uh, and you know it's interesting when when they st- sort of start to talk to experts in the field and they talk to these people and like is it a what what is it that makes it about a certain person that like has that ability to you know be attracted to like prepubescent children and shit yeah. like that and it, is it a mental disease how do you treat it do you treat it as a as a mental condition do you treat it as a criminal condition but like Chris is saying. Um, you know, I think I think generally the you know as as society we have this sort of natural defense mechanism of children. So so it's natural for people to to want to feel this sense of reprisal and this sense of redemption when they hear of people being you know child molesters and stuff like that because you're essentially sticking up for something that can't stick up for itself. You know, we're all children once. Yeah, and exactly. so so then th- so they enter into you know uh, a prison that's full of people who might not necessarily like 
think, oh, you know, do we treat this as a mental illness or what? A predators. Yeah, predators, and, yeah. And and there's like there's a scene in this um, Louis Theroux. I think it's called. He did like a series called Extreme Love, and it's and it's about like extreme love in in a bunch of different contexts and stuff like that. And one of them is this pedophilia doco where he goes to the prison and it's like he's interviewing these guys in the yard and then all of a sudden it's like a packed fucking american like middle american yard like prison so it's like you can imagine what it's like and um and then i think sort of there must be some movement that the guards can tell that okay fucking the other prisoners are realizing that we're the where we've got this crew like talking to pedophiles and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden the guards are like, get the fuck out of here. There's just like this little fucking slight energy change where a few people are saying stuff and then some people start to muster and then the guards are like, hang on a minute, this could turn into a fucking bad situation here. Louis right. Th- next thing like Louis Theroux's getting, you know, choked out against the fence or something mm. like that. Oh, really? By w- like one of the prisoners? No, I'm saying like... Uh, it, it, potential it, for oh, that. It, it, oh, potential. Oh, so the other. guards squash it before that yeah, before that yeah, ever comes yeah. Yeah, like to fruition. Because a lot of these guys in these correctional facilities doing it, they might be crims, but they've also got their own children. And exactly. it seems, I think the, the thing that's so, that people just find filthy in it too is that in, at a guess, 99% of those cases, it wouldn't be something you'd come back from mm. as a child yeah. too. You just, and you're defenseless at that point too. Yeah. So it's just seen as predatory. But exactly you, know what's, what you know what's a real crazy contradiction though is like uh, it, the, the sort of paradigm of sodomy that exists in, in jails as well. So it's sort of like, probably a lot of these guys, their punishment is actually getting raped themselves, like potentially. Yeah. And, um, and you know, it's sort of like, is that, if you're, if you're fucking so much bigger than some like, f- like other fully grown man who's essentially as defenseless as a child and you rape him. Good point. It's like, you know, it's, 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 it's like, human oh. beings are fucking, it's a, we're a crazy yeah. fucking species, man. Like, tooth for a tooth, eye for an eye, you yeah, know. Like, and, yeah. and that's why there's almost like a, a, a sick validation in, in having pedos sent to prison where you know that they are going to get raped and they get, are going to get bashed and they are going to live a very, very horrible existence is because mm. you know that if... And you hope that, you know, like that nobody gets sent there that hasn't done anything because that is what would just be an awful, awful atrocity is having not done anything and being treated like that. Mm. Surely it happens though. Surely it happens. 100%. 100%. There's like, you know, some sort of statistic out there about the amount of innocent people in jail and it'd Mm. fucking surprise you, man. Dudes have done some long sentences for shit they haven't done. I think you'd find it more like more dominant in America more than Australia. And like imagine this Ben McCormack guy. Like like I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit here. I in no way, you know, like... Researching the story. Like um, I, I in no way sort of condone any kind of fucking you know illegal illegal sexual activity with with an underage person. But you know, imagine if he fucking was found innocent. Yeah, his it. his name is already Strange. mud. You're yeah. fucked. His yeah. name if is already go, mud. Any yeah. form of like Twitter and everything, and just type in Ben McCormick. You know, if he's, there was he's already been hung, drawn, and some quartered. sort of yeah, weird right. thing You're where right. somebody else you know framed him. He's like 100 percent fucking it, yeah. already what, already been hung. We yeah, do, said off the top. Innocent until proven guilty, but uh, but they don't lay charges though unless they've got something. That's you know right. What I mean? That's like, right. One of the uh, one of the craziest uh, docos I've seen regarding like um, rape and things like that was around uh, Britain's hardest debt collector. There yeah. was a, there was a guy on that Vice did a doco on that yeah. on YouTube. It's still available. Shout one out of, Vice this one, episode. Yeah, one, yeah, of, yeah. one of the best pieces. If you that, haven't heard of Vice, get amongst it. Unbelievable. One of the best pieces I've ever seen was uh, this bloke named Shane and a just a. Hard pommy that's done time for all sorts of shit. Now he's a, a standover man slash debt collector. And a guy owed him a debt from a car yard this one time, and he'd followed up with him saying, "Hey, look, you, you owe me this money. Like shit's going to happen if you don't pay it." Comes round again. He, he doesn't have the cash. Look, you, you fucked up basically. And he sends uh, sends one of his henchmen around, and uh, this bloke had, uh, had done like. So many prison sentences himself, the bloke that's going over. Uh, two of them go around, rapes the bloke, films it, and says, This will be on the desk of every kid in your daughter's primary school and, high, and your other daughter's <laughs> high school on Monday morning. You getting fucked uh, if you don't come up with the cash. A guy goes home from work that day and ends, ends himself. Yeah. Oh. So you held, you held that over him as leverage, uh, f- oh. photos of him getting raped. Like, oh, Jesus. Talking Christ. like, yeah. 
pretty dark little Friday night here at the knockoff, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's some that's some yeah. heavy. That's shit some right underworld there. shit, yeah. right? There. Yeah. Because you really that that would almost be a, a decision that you'd have to make, you know, like because obviously if you couldn't come yeah. up with the cash, I don't have the coin. Yeah, I, I don't, don't have the coin, and yeah. and you know this. If you're going to broadcast that video, like mm. I'm, I'm yeah. I don't want to be here for yeah. it. You know, I watched a documentary on uh, Thursday night, I think, on Netflix called My Sex Robot. <laughs> and uh, it's um, I saw those Snapchats. <laughs> it's about got one on the way. It's well. about uh, <laughs> forty five minutes of um, like a one pleasure, of, <laughs> like a, a British. Um, I'm alright for a beer, thanks. Man. <laughs> like I, I highly recommend it if you're looking for a um, like a, a short laugh. something to watch yeah. it and a fucking laugh. The episode or the robot? Oh man, because because uh, you know. It, it seems that there's a set demographic for dudes who want to have sex with a robot. You are, you know, really, really similar. <laughs> like all sort of reclusive, single, older men who, you know, actually one of these dudes was married. So I can't, I can't really categorize them totally, but uh, fucking hell, man. Is like, that cheating? It, but, uh, no, I, well, this one, this one guy, like in the doco, he's... he's obsessed with the idea and his girlfriend wants to be supportive of it she's like you know he's not he's it's he'll never replace me it's 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 not me so and then he gets this uh like sexual hypnotist to sit with him and his wife and 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 essentially hypnotize his wife she never gets hypnotized it's so obvious but like at to be a robot and then she's like initiating sequence and then <laughs> this like hypnotist lady sits in the corner of the room while the dude goes over and like starts kissing his wife and he's like you know sp- giving her robot orders and shit like that but there's this um it's it's go, so go f- they go full fetish with it to try it's so and weird of- man like these guys are talking about you know talking about weird like the human being being fucking so weird and like all the different levels of sexuality that exist these guys are legit like fetishing for Robots, like not mm. sex dolls, but for like robots, and they don't want it to be, you know, completely, you know, lifelike. They want it to be sort of there's there's all of this psychology yeah. about you know like having total control over something and being able to order something around and and all of that sort of stuff. But there's this one guy in it who's a fucking legend, and he's the best guy in the whole documentary who's building these sex robots, and he's this dude out in like fucking Minnesota or something like that, and he's like Tim and his missus, eh? Tim and his yeah. missus that he's building like he's building men and women and shit. And yeah. so he's like this dude that he builds is like he's he's basically made the robot able to sort of go on all fours and do a fucking motion <laughs> like with its hips. But the fucking dude robot is on all fours and his ock is on the ground as well. He's got like like dead set like the length of an foot, arm on, on his penis. <laughs> and, and it's just like – and it's so funny because it's like the doco sets up one of these sort of reclusive geek type dudes who's really into the idea of fucking a sex robot. And this guy from Minnesota who's got these two sex robots and he's like, this, I'm, I'm happy today. Like, I, I'm going to see if it fucking actually works what I've been putting so much work on and shit. And then this dude sort of walks in and you, it like, it's the craziest reaction that you see from him because you can almost relate to it. Like, if you're... You know, and like I'll, I'll like you can almost relate to it. You <laughs> no, I'm you saying, want to, you want to real, be real careful I'm with saying, your follow yeah, yeah. points. I'm, p- I'm putting myself out there here, but if if like if you were really overwhelmed by like uh you know sexual sexual desire, and this dude, you can see that he's like he instantly starts sweating and he's going a bit red in the face when he's like looking at these robots. The the dude from Minnesota just like opens the chick's shirt and then he's like, you can see she's got everything where it's meant to be and stuff like that, and he's like, oh. Oh yeah, like I can yeah. I can see that. Empowered and by then, it. dude at one point says like um he's like the Minnesota guy is like, You wanna make a porno? And then and then like sort of leaves the question to linger and the guy yeah. goes how much money you got? And he's like, no, 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 not you. Like you could make a porno with these two sort of thing. And it's this like awkward <laughs> thing where this geek guy has thought for a minute, am I going to get paid to fuck this robot on screen? Because there's a price. There's a fucking price. And that thing looks hot as fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's similar. Um, there was, I think I've seen that documentary and one of the guys, they have interchangeable faces and stuff on these right. robots too. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, Oh, you have to you have to excuse her. She's just sleeping it off, and she's got her eyes oh, shut man. on like this face mask sort of thing. Like he's he's just fucked her, and she's having a nap. Like, they have oh. a um, they have a convention where like the it's like you know, at a convention center type thing, stalls all set up, 
fucking nobody there. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a few dudes. They're, they're all, this, they're all and, in the rooms. And this one, other, room. this one other guy who's building robots and like trying to sp- spruik them at this fucking like event is obviously not like the other guy. He's he's into it himself. That's why he's building this robot. And it comes across as so creepy. He's there on the stage like fingering this fucking oh. like sex robot and shit. And there's a whole bunch of like female like i don't know pr people that are there obviously for yeah. the event not necessarily yeah. because they're into it <laughs> it is this fucking it's like business baby yeah. creepy, <laughs> part of the marketing crew yeah. creepy dude who's I like i build websites made, <laughs> <laughs> made his own sex robot and is like showing everybody that it can be fingered on stage it's just Far like, out. Oh. and in in some way shape or form though isn't it sort of Relatable to you know to to that whole masturbation thing with toys you know whether it's a whether it's a pocket pussy or whether it's a dildo or whether it's a vibrator or whatever I mean or whether it's a, a full human being that you can you know like the, with tits you can squeeze and shit like that like it's all some sort of artificial sex toy you exactly know? Like right man way. have you ever heard of uh, objectum sexuals no like a, a, another documentary that I'd seen on uh, object objectum sexual a uh, fellow was obsessed with his cars he, had, he owned two cars oh, lived, lived yeah, out on I've a pretty, pretty rural property too just lived out there on his own and he'd go out every night and just start feeling up his car like mm. it was just the really? hottest woman he'd ever seen and like He's around the arse end of the car. Dead I mean, this guy's serious too. He's not, not a paid actor by any stretch. He's like, look at the curves on that. Like, look at this shit. Like, oh. You can see it in his eyes, man. You can see it in his eyes. Like, look how it's just rounded like that. Like, he's just seen the nicest Latin booty that he's ever seen. Really? Like, in, in his life. Talk, talking about how he ejaculates on his car, everything. Oh. Like, he's, he'll, be there, he'll be there in the exhaust pipe, fucking oh, R- jerking off. Like, what? Unbelievable! Oh, shit. Unbelievable! See, oh, that's a forever like a, a, a question that people used to hit me up with in a while back. Did about, you fuck cars? Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> fucked your <No>. car? <laughs> 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 So people always ask me about the cars. No, there, there was a, there was a nice beamer, man. You ever fucked it? <laughs> <laughs> No, there, there, was, there was a statement come after that. Um, <laughs> is um, is whether you can actually have a sexual connection with and be turned on by something that isn't really isn't sexual. So yeah. for for yeah. me, I'm, I'll, I am and used to be obsessed with surfing. Whether you could actually get a hard on and ejaculate over you know over perfect surf you know and it's like no you re- you really can't like you can no, beat no. yourself off and think about having sexual like sexual acts and stuff like that with mm. another female but you can't mm. think of the way or think of a perfect wave just peeling down a mm. point and still and that's what's um this on this doco the chicks like that they talk to like a proper psychologist or whatever and she says because they're like, oh, th- you know, there's concern over if we create sex robots, then, you know, women w- will be treated as, you know, like second class and it'll just be all about the robot and shit like that. And this lady was like, look, it's not going to happen because it's always going to be a niche thing. It's yeah. not like because sex dolls exist now that every man is having sex with them. It's it's a really small demographic of, of people that find this titillating you know I so i can't imagine the majority of the people that are there are, are, are not having anything to do with with females or or males in a sexual yeah. way 100 and that's know, what man, i was so. saying about the fucking you know like sort of stereotyping these guys they're all like they're not lady killers put it that way yeah. so you know Just, that, yeah. that they've been they've been burnt a lot of times in their life and you know when you are watching these documentaries and you get these sort of people that are in their middle age and they're a bit fucking weird for one reason or another Fucking in, like invariably, you can tell that there's there's something that's gone on in the earlier part of their life, and that nurture aspect has 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 made their personality take a turn. I know people have got you know genetics and biology and everything to make them a certain personality, and every every you know baby comes out slightly different, like with their own little flavor and all that sort of stuff. But events contribute as well. The events that happen in a person's life shape them dramatically, sure. like you know, and uh, and yeah, fucking. I guess I guess that's sort of coming back to the the pedophile chat and shit like that. You know, it's it's proven that a lot of a lot of those people are molested themselves and shit yeah. like that. So, 
life's fucked up, man. Like humans, like we don't get away scot free, eh? Like we we die at the end of it, and 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 along the way, it's it's a bit of a battle and shit, you know. So. I consider myself lucky to be to be born in the time that we're born in and to be born in the place that we're born in. How how 100%. fucking good we've got it, you know? Couldn't agree more. Yeah, I mean, well, imagine being born in ancient Greece. Like look what the Spartans used to do to the little boys there. Yeah, yeah, we were just we just mentioned that, yeah. But um fucking yeah, I guess like, you know, you, the other roll of the dice, you could have been born in Syria and you look at yeah. the shit that's fucking going on in Syria right now, like yeah. they've just so own, own government own government has used fucking chemical weapons on them or some shit. I'd and, fucking um, love to be a fly on the wall in like a Russian like political meeting or a, and speak Russian, obviously. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, to, to, to really know what's going on with all of that sort of chat around, you know, people being involved with other people and all that sort of stuff and like what is actually, you know, going on with this whole conflict. Like now we've got the US. I just saw on CNN before we started the potty, they've just fucking... Um, launched a whole bunch of missiles, s- missiles yeah. just F- 59 and, of them and they're showing these videos and it's basically like a giant big fucking battleship at night that just looks like it's shooting missiles into the distance like yeah. obviously they've got all sorts of you know targeting targeting devices and shit so they know what they're shooting at you'd hope yeah but, they're, um, they're out in the ocean they're fucking yeah man hundreds of kilometers away it's just mm. so yeah let line these <laughs> bastards up apparently one of only to fire one of those, bearing in mind they shot 59 of them, is like to fire one just costs an astronomical amount of money mm. to do. And they've, the target site where they've hit, it's been reported that they have killed four people. It was close to homes and whatnot as yeah. well, but like... They, they shot, shot up the warehouse where they, a big production sort of centre, basically, mm. what, is what, what they'd targeted, but spent all that money, got four people, but supply and demand... From from what we're hearing, and who knows with fake news and everything these days, it might be exactly. smoke and mirrors. No, I don't no. know That's nearly I mean. enough That's about it. That's what I mean. It. Yeah, it'd be so it'd be so good to actually know what the fuck was going on, and not yeah. have to try and read through the lines of like different media outlets and try and figure out what's going on. But yeah. you know, even even like being present at certain meetings wouldn't give you the full picture. You'd need to be present at their meetings and their meetings. And well, there's, there's interesting times ahead because obviously as when all the, the talks sort of started about it ever since the chemical attack, which was, I think it might have been only been a day or two ago, mm. the Russians have, have openly come out and said that, you know, I think it was the Americans, um, the French, the English and somebody else are all sort of saying, yeah, we need to do something about this. But the Russians have openly come out and said that if, if you know, if you guys are going to attack, there will be conse- consequences. Mm. So it's like, some pretty scary times ahead, I think. Hey, eh? like yeah. I mean, we always we always talk about this like is World War Three around the corner and, and shit like that. But and they all protect their own interests and all that sort of, of stuff. And 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 that's what's so crazy about all of it is that a lot of these countries and and the US specifically, you know, has really created an industry for themselves for you know generations, decades certainly around war. You yeah. know, I mean, because you talk about the price of of those bombs that they're sending or the price of like it, it costs and, and this is a statistic you can look it up, seventeen and a half thousand dollars to dress a US military service person who goes over and wears the the body armor and has the gun and has the boots and has the helmet and has 17-5. the gear. Seventeen Shit, five. Son. You could get so like a solid two thousand and ten Isuzu D Max for that. Four, four, it's US man. Four and a half b- mm. bill. Two thousand and twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> lift kit with a lift kit. Four and a half billion with a B like dollars. It costs the US taxpayers a year. To run air conditioning in Iraq for the soldiers that are there, you know. So you're talking about like an industry that that is effectively created around war, you know. So for yeah. all of those, you know, for all of those, you know, outfits and boots and helmets and guns and all that sort of stuff, there's a manufacturing company making those, and there's yeah. people with mm. jobs that are responsible for punching those out, mm. and that supports an economy. One of the U- US's, I think, the US's biggest economy. Is like mechanical shit. Yeah. Well, that's how Under Armour started. Well, it's, there you it's, go. An, yeah. it's a sports apparel brand now, but it was originally a, a wartime thing where they were making legitimate Under right. Armour and transcended into the world of sports. And now sponsoring Steph Curry, Anthony Joshua. Yeah. 
Drew Mitchell. Like. Yeah. <laughs> GS, GSP. It, he's up there on their level. Like. <laughs> mate, t- <laughs> mate, Tony Carroll, the old retired rugby league player, is currently sponsored by... Is by that right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Speaking of Anthony, Thumbs up. Steph Curry, who? Speaking of Anthony Joshua, man, I'm really, really looking forward to that Klitschko fight later this month. That is probably one of the biggest heavy heavyweight fights to come through boxing in a while. Most I, definitely. I can remember um, where was I? I don't remember specifically where I was, but it was away on holiday somewhere and watched one of Anthony Joshua's fights against a bum. Mm. So it would have probably been about, you know, like eight or nine fights ago. Like In probably, boxing, man? No yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. A foot, yeah. Pound go, record? No go way. Figure. <laughs> and, and he just brutalised this guy. And, and even at the time, the commentators sort of said, this guy needs to start having some steps, steps up in competition, you know, because he is absolutely just walking through people and is just... Destroying people, you know. So he is a massive dude, two six six. You know, like I mean, a, a real legit heavyweight who you know who it's throws probably, bombs. He's probably running into Klitschko at the right time as well. He's coming off an L. He lost to Tyson yep. Fury. Yep. Gra- granted, Tyson's over two meters tall. It is a big, big rangy guy that caused problems for him. But there's conversations now about Anthony Joshua being. A legit, legitimate once in a lifetime athlete. Lennox Lewis uh, yeah. type, you know, absolutely, Most man. Yeah, no, that'll be a really interesting fight. Canelo Alvarez has got another bo- a fight booked next month as well. I mean, there's there's um, uh, Andre Ward mm. and um, and and what's his name? Boxing um, with a, Kovalev uh, have agreed to a rematch. Re- is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I heard that was very close. Not not a fight that I saw, but bo- June, boxing. June, um, I think that goes down. I've thrown plenty of shade at boxing in recent times too about the, just the the whole model being dead, but mm. there is still big fights that can happen in that that do garner people's attention. Mm. I mean, there's there's local fight nights happening everywhere around the place these days, but still the biggest. Most famous names in boxing are arguably more famous than the largest athletes in mixed martial arts. Yeah, I think that's a true statement for mm. sure. I think on the ho- – maybe it's just because we're – mixed martial arts is more our thing mm. and so you're, you know, subconsciously aware of, you know, more athletes that's, that's from true. it. That, exactly right. Well, you, you know, if you look at – oh, you compare who knows Manny Pacquiao to compare who knows Tyron Woodley. Yeah, good point. It's, it's both champions. They're both champions in their own respective art, but uh, it's the goalposts are a fucking long way apart for the moment. So mm. Pacquiao, Jeff Horn, is that is Pacquiao, that Pacquiao, Jeff, Jeff Horn in Brisbane. Yeah, yeah that, Je- that's going to go down. Yeah, Jeff that'll Horn, be Jeff that'll Horn's be an, is an Aussie boxer and coming to do a stadium show at Suncorp Stadium. So they'll pull 50,000. Su- Suncorp sits, yeah. fi- what, 55? 50, yeah, 52 at capacity, oh, okay, but yeah. with... On, or if you had people on the field, yeah. then well and truly 60 comfortably. Mm. So, See, Pacquiao came out and um, and said that obviously early days when the Mayweather um, f- like, uh, McGregor fight was sort of like in, in early talks, he sort of called out and said, if, you know, if Mayweather's not going to jump on this McGregor, like, I'm all yeah. for this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get it on. I'll get in and light that fucker up. Yeah. And, and a lot of people have done that. A yeah, lot of sure. people, you know, realise that there's money to be made in it and were like, hey, I'll fight, I'll fight him. Mm, because yeah. let's face it, Connor is that one-man band of... You know, of hyping a fight, and that's what you need. He's so much smarter for Con- Connor to wait for Floyd, yeah. though. Oh, he's yeah. the only yeah. take if Pac he's going to do it. If he's going <laughs> to do it once, I can cho- choose appropriately because it might be first and last. Mate, he's the only <laughs> yeah. only UFC fighter on the Forbes list, and there's a reason for that too. Like, and, I, and, and I tell you, I, one my fucking... that reason being his stardom or his skill. Mate, in just, your just his, his ability to to sell a fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, four years ago today, sorry, Chris. Four, yeah, four years right. ago today, he made his UFC debut against Marcus Brimage. I saw yeah. that uh, he posted yeah. the video of and, it and was broke. He said, "No money, no sponsors." Yeah. And Thirty-five two euros, two grenades, two grenades. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Truth, fact. On his on, facts. on his on his way to yeah. the fight, and he was stopping in to like pick up his, his government check on the way through, like yeah. before he went to the airport. Yeah. Like, Good on him, man. Good on him. Yeah, that's right. Props to that shit. So, did he compete in boxing? Um, organizations prior to MMA. Does he have any boxing Ami, credentials Ami, at all, or I think amateur, if anything, that he has. Right, yeah. No, yeah, he's O and O as a professional. So that, that right. whether he had a a pro fight in Dublin one night in, in a pub, that would still be on his record if he was a professional. <laughs> yeah, so yeah it, good point. It, it would be amateur. He's going. He would be going into this match at O and O, and also as you pointed out the other day, at 147 pounds. Apparently, it's been alleged that that would be the weight for those two to fight, which. 
Connor's been real comfy at these other weights, but yeah. he's a professional and he's never missed weight and he's not going to miss weight on this no. fucking paycheck, which no. is going to be 10 times the size of any mixed martial arts check that he's ever got if this Mayweather thing does happen. But will it so affect So he, he will get there, but it's going to fucking hurt. What's the go, what's the go with um, boxing weigh-ins and the amount of time before the fight that they get and Identical. shit like that? Yeah. Identical. Same, same the MMA, 24 hours. MMA have copied the model essentially, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the main. I think that if, like you said, that that weight division will hurt him. But you know, again, let, you know exactly what you said about fucking that he'll get there because yep. he's been there before and he knows how to make that weight and he's not going to miss it for that paycheck. Mm. But back, what I was going to say before is my under the bus for this week is 100% Dana White for you know like doing that complete backflip on. Being totally against it and being anti, all of a sudden, you know, like anti Connor. Connor's, you know, signed to the UFC all of a sudden. But then now that they're just going to get their huge cut of money, he's like, why wouldn't I hook this fight up? You know, why wouldn't I do this and let him make the money? And it's like, mate, like I think the 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 Jeff Mayweather came out during the week, and, and you can't believe Jeff Mayweather because he's obviously Team Floyd anyway. And, and brain dead. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that too. But even quoted the number as 80-20 of Connor's purse UFC to Connor. So Connor walks, t- takes the fight and walks away with 20% of the purse. Is that that's wrong? A, wow. That's what Jeff Mayweather says. But no way. I didn't to lease him that. out as I've, such. I've, I've heard that, you know, I've heard a lot of other numbers, but... Um, that's a sight game But I've sure. also heard 50-50 and I don't think it'd be too far out those realms. Yeah, what do you reckon is the, what? What do you reckon makes the difference in that fight? Do you think the gloves, the bigger boxing gloves, play play a factor into Connor's power? Uh, definitely. I think that boxing in general plays a plays a difference in in that how that sport carries out because it's it is totally a different sport. Like I watched Coach Cav like interviewed on Fox Sports during the week and. You know, like the the fact that he's even got Coach Cav coaching him. You know, like I mean, he needs a boxing coach. You know, he, it's the sport of boxing, and Coach Cav is a a, a fantastic mixed martial arts coach, and he's a, a great jujitsu practitioner himself. Um, but it's a boxing fight. Mm. You know, do you what, are you, what Con- are you doing? Do you reckon Connor's just see Freddie or someone? Go see Freddie Roach. Or someone. Or someone Freddie you know? Roach. What do you reckon Connor's trainings look like over the last six months? Mm. Do you reckon it's bit, he's been drilling? Takedowns and fucking doing all no. his usual shit, or he's just been doing hundred percent boxing. It's really hard to say. That's a, that's a really good question. It, whether he still stays with that mixed martial arts background because he still needs to know that and drill that regularly, yeah. or whether he has enough of that in the muscle memory and the memory bank for the time being, where he can go, look, this is this is the biggest opportunity I've ever had, bar none. I'm I getting to, all I, sorts I of throw, coaches oh, yeah, in. And I, shit. I need to throw hands purely. Well, from if, now. if you can believe what Coach Cav said on that Fox Sports interview during the week, Connor has already solely started training boxing. Yeah. So right, he, is, right. he is not training any any mixed martial arts, kicks, takedowns, anything else. He yep. is solely training for that McGregor fight so at that, the moment. So that Coach Kavanaugh there would have to take a back seat. I, I did read that he had a boxing d- coach d- come does in. He, does I, he, I don't know who it was. I can't I'm sure he does. Yeah. Sure he does. For a guy he doesn't, a, seem like no, he doesn't seem I, like an egomaniac. He doesn't seem like you. He would. Um, Floyd walks out into that ring face? at home. Like Floyd yeah. walks out to that ring, and he's mm. comfortable as he's been there, and that's that's where he belongs. Like surely Connor's, and obviously Connor does too in his own respect. But it's 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 the square ring this time, isn't it? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are the, the one everyone wants though? Does anyone know how they shape up? Like in terms of height, reach. Yeah, yeah. So Floyd Floyd's five eight. Uh, Connor's 5'9 um, Floyd has a 72 inch reach Connor has a 74 inch reach So you know th- There's there's a, bit, there's a bit of difference between them Connor will definitely go into the, the ring um, You know Bigger in terms of weight Like I think You know Floyd sort of fought um, I think like uh, It was either Alvarez or Chavez Or um, one of those guys Marquez. Yeah at, at 151 anyway You know Like I mean So Floyd, looking at him, he wouldn't walk around much bigger than that, I no, would say. That, no. That'd that probably be about walk around weight for him. Connor could walk around. He absolutely probably walks around at 168, I yeah. think. Well, you well know, that's so. what he stood on the scales at, yeah. sort, of, sort of healthy as so at there's that a, time. So there's a difference, but there's also a difference being the greatest defensive, bo- arguably the greatest defensive boxer the world has ever seen. Mm. You know, I just right. hope it's uh, not like a letdown sort of – 
I guess, you know, me being totally un- uninitiated in boxing and, you know, could count the amount of times on one hand that I've watched a proper boxing match, but that Floyd, Mether, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao fight, I remember everybody was saying, this is going to be the sort of thing that you're like, where were you when that fucking went down? It's a fluff. And, you know, the most memorable thing for me was probably Jamie Foxx's off-key fucking rendition of the, <laughs> the national anthem. Like, Good I just point. remember him Good fucking point. dancing around for a bit and that was about it. Well, like, and I remember Max Kellerman, the... The, the Shout out to whoever did the fucking audio engineering oh. for that shit because they he w- he didn't have the piano track in his ear at all. He was just going straight a cappella. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah. Shout out Jamie Fox. You did your absolute best in the trying circumstances. Yeah, Fuck sake. That was you're dead right. That was <laughs> fucking ghastly from that fight. He, he was just trying. Oh uh, yeah. He was the just bombs trying. bursting <laughs> in <laughs> rhythmic gymnastics and, and shit. The, and the funny thing is, I'm, 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 I was one of those people. You know, like I was one of those people that was spruiking the. Where were you when sort of type comments because it was, it was that type of fight. It, it legit was. But that's the fight game is that it yeah. doesn't always end that way. You don't yeah. always end with the, the fairy tale finish. You can end with a Stephen Thompson, Tyron Woodley, where you're just like, oh, fucking no, hell, I wasted yeah. my 60 bucks. And there's yeah. gross potential for this. Chances are we'd be paying $100 for it and it'll be a fucking a gross mismatch or yeah. over soon or, or we could be sitting here going, Holy he fuck. tagged him. Yeah. Connor knocked him out. Him. Yeah. He fucking hurt him. Like, Can you oh, imagine? Oh, if Connor, imagine? If Connor tagged oh. him, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Can you Absolutely. imagine in a, in a boxing The internet room, would fucking melt. It would melt, man. It would absolutely <laughs> melt. Connor comes out. Say goodbye to AI. Yeah. None of that shit. Yeah. Kind of, it would yeah. break the fucking yeah. internet. You just see Floyd on fucking, you know, like sea legs, you know, yeah, like, he got oh, me. shit. He got me. Yeah. Yeah. Credit, credit where credit's He's due. He's doing the stanky yeah, leg. Yeah, what yeah. the fuck? I'm so interested to see that fight, but I'm really interested to see the build up as well. I think that yeah. um, Floyd's going to take a different approach this time. Like I think previous, like I think he knows the, the fight's sold now. So I think that he is, you know, he's a master as well as McGregor is at getting into the opposition's head. Connor, Connor um, will own him, I reckon. Well, you already, you already just see mental, Floyd the other day came warfare, out. Yeah, it's interesting to see who'll yeah. get the better yeah. of that. He's planted those seeds of doubt in everyone so far. And it'll be interesting to see if, if Floyd comes out like, man, he, Floyd's not being Floyd. Like, Con- he he already, yeah. Did you hear what he said the other day? Like he was like... Uh, he's the most, Connor- sorry, sorry, he's the most confident motherfucker to ever walk into a boxing ring, Floyd. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, the other the other day, like he was sort of commenting around what um, Connor commented on and said that he was going to knock Floyd out, and then Floyd's just kind of like you know took took a bit of like a, a diplomatic approach and was like, well, you know, he's, he's the best in his sport. Like he's allowed to think that he's going to come over here and do that. Mm. Like he's well within his rights. Like you know, my, whatever. Exactly. So you know, that's that's not that's not normal mm. Floyd chat, and, is it? And like, and, <laughs> and Floyd would would be thinking the exact same thing. You know, like Floyd would be thinking. I'm going to get a huge payday for this and this is going to be a piece of piss. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I'm absolutely going to... Like, this guy doesn't know what he's in for. I and, think that would be his mentality, yeah. And, and that's where probably Floyd will... Connor will be out of his depth in the pre-fight lead-up is because Connor has always had that element of being able to say to his competition... How does it feel to be a millionaire and shit like that? You know, like yeah. I mean, because he puts that over them. When and he's had the biggest status over yeah. probably. That's a good point, man. Most people. Really good point. Floyd's like, how much? How much are you worth, bro? Yeah. You know, like I mean, you know, like I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll you, you're here because of me. Mm. You know, like I mean, and that's a total. A lot of reversal. his shtick mm. comes from yeah. that. But to be fair. When he was fucking broken, no sponsors, he was calling people out and getting in people's he heads was. and shit yeah, like that. Yeah. It's only sort of now, find his way. now that, you, you know, yeah, I fucking, I, I don't doubt that motherfucker's mental mental no, warfare no, game all. in the slightest. And, 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 and that Dylan Danius is going for the exact same model in Bellator, you know, like I've mm. seen him come out during the week and, and say, you know, that that Bellator, you know, Madison Square Garden card with Vandalay Silver and, and Chael Sonnen and, you know, like, and Fedor and... You know, Mitrione, and, and that thing's fucking stacked. I just think it's too similar the Dylan Dennis model of promo to McGregor. It's yeah. like, come on, man, come up with your own. Yeah. Under, if you want to take a similar path, that's fine, but don't be, mm. don't be the same. He's already there. He's like, I'm the highest paid fighter at Bellator. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you're not, mate. Yeah. Like, you're, yeah. Not. Like, you we're not, you're we're not. We're not. We're not buying into that. Like, no. you, you're O and O. The, there's no way that Coker has just signed you to a fucking. More money Bo- than Fedor. A, a bo- exactly right. Or Rampage, King yeah. Mo, yeah. fucking a- any any of those guys at the top level. But you touched on under the bus, and I want to get there two for one too because I got something really fucking grinding my gears is plagiarism. These motherfuckers at Nova One Hundred Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne, plagiarise the shit out of our segment. I think Brown. under the bus. In, in my opinion, under the bus, they've started. They come and think. Let's throw someone under the bus this week, and I'm talking Chrissy Swan. 
That's is the head host of that program. Some, some bitch has some, always had it out for some dude, knock off. Some dude named <laughs> Sam. <laughs> and Brownie. And Brisbane Lions royalty, Jonathan Brown. Brownie wouldn't have come up with that idea. I Brown, hope not. Brownie's, I hope not, Brownie's good in my books. We're thinking you're better than that, bro. I, yeah, I couldn't do shit to Jonathan Steel. Brown. Steel. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. We've got nothing Bra- to love for you, man. Jonathan Brown has his legacy, <laughs> but they, they came up with it and they have essentially stolen an idea, I think, so... Nova, Nova 100 in Melbourne we are under the, the bus t- for We me. coined the term under the bus yeah, and yeah, everybody yeah. fucking yeah. knows they, it. They, we, exactly. we invented under the bus and the word fuck. <laughs> 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 Jonathan Brown, though, an interesting one for him. Um, one of the – there's an, an ex-boxing champion in Australia is named Billy Johnson and was uh, got – uh, after his professional boxing career was just known as a hard man and even looks like a fucking hard man, Billy Johnson. Looks like he's got a lot of miles on the clock. Just one of those guys you'd see at a pub and be like, that dude's tough. He's a strength and conditioning coach. He'd worked with the Cowboys, the Broncos, everything, just n- t- Gold Coast Titans, bunch of Sydney clubs over his career. He'd be late f- in his 50s now for sure and was just known as the, as the toughest strength and conditioning coach going. I remember he got asked in, in an interview one time saying, out of anyone you've ever coached, because they're obviously doing boxing at strength and conditioning, everything mm. like that across all these footy clubs, because who is the one footballer that you wouldn't want to fuck with, like in the streets if you're like a young Australian bloke down at the pub and he goes, Carl Webb. He goes, you could not pay me enough to fight Jonathan Brown. Fuck. Jonathan oh, Brown. really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. No, Brownie must know how to throw him mm. uh, correctly and he's a big dude. He'd be... 195 centimetres or something, yeah. Brownie, all, all of 110. Uh, Jonathan Brown, f- Brian him. Stan. That, Full exa- yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mate, exactly right. That big sort of thick frame. So See the Brownie's two, right two of two, them uh, fight in the backyard. Chrissy Swan and Sam, uh, yeah. you're under the bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. <laughs> Get spe- spe- Speaking of UFC, <laughs> though, we do have a blockbuster card this weekend with, with a couple of really big stashes on it and a few really, really good fights that, you know, an, a, a few armchair sort of – Fans such as ourselves, I suppose, probably wouldn't, you know, really know some of the fights on here. But, you know, like, I mean, to kick that card off with, you've got, you know, Will Brooks and Charles Oliveira, which is an absolute barn burner, potentially fight of the year. Um, Will Brooks coming off a loss. Is Charles Oliveira coming off a loss as well? I think he might have had a loss to Pettis. Maybe, maybe 45 or is the last time that he, he came out. He I can sort he of hop in between. But Pettis or something. Will maybe? Brooks coming in as an ex-Bellator champion came in with a lot of hype and this is his chance to make a statement. Because yeah. he's come in, he's taken some L's. Like he lost, yeah. like, off the top of my head, I can't remember who, who he'd lost to. But yeah. Charles yeah. Oliveira is coming off two losses two to losses. Ricardo Lamas and Anthony Pettis. Oh, did Lamas oh, beat him? Fucking no shame in either of those yeah. names. Fuck no. <laughs> yeah. That's some yeah. 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 A win yeah. over Miles Jury before that Nice And, Miles Jury and a missing. loss to Max Holloway Before that So he's had a fucking he's Tough fought, run fought yeah. Tough bastard Essentially the Broncos He's, in, he's uh, always fought Tough bastard <laughs> Will Brooks is, uh, who's, What's his Will uh, Brooks Let me have a look I wanna, What's I his record I say that he might have Lost to Ross Pearson But I, I, I don't quote me on that Maybe you know? Ill Will Yeah <laughs> That's Ill, his nickname yeah, Ill yeah. Will But uh, he is really Really high level Absolutely You know he's, yeah, he's a, coming, a tough guy. yeah Coming off a loss To Oliveira Alex, no. Alex Alex Oliveira uh, Cowboy oh, Oliveira Cowboy, yeah. Alex yeah. Oliveira right. and That was uh, a uh, Cowboy Oliveira In that fight Was six pounds overweight And Will Brooks Still took that fight That's right I do remember that now so You're right You can yeah. almost scratch that Off his record He he had every right there To go No I'm not fucking Taking that Good fight point. Because if he's six pounds over And he's been cutting weight He's already stacking it on So chances oh. are He was 185 In the Good fucking point. cage Good right? point man yeah. you, Good you can, on Will Brooks for You that. can scratch that So this And is a win over Ross Pearson Before that A win There win. you go yeah. Sorry. But, but a grind though oh, yeah. It was It would have been was A decision yeah, round yeah. three, unanimous decision. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that was a tough fight. I do recall that. I'm going to go with Brooks. I think this is his Me chance to, to really make a statement and say, oh, look, I do do belong in this sort of calibre of competition. Two, is that, two is that guys, a 55 or 45? 55. 55, yeah. I don't think Will Brooks would get that low. Yeah. But uh, it would be to his detriment if he did. Oliveira's – that's a good weight for Oliveira. He gets down to 45, but it, it's – it's he, he cuts a lot of weight. I mean, he's, he's long and lean and thin, but – you know that he's still a real, t- real tall guy to be cutting down to forty-five. Next fight on the main card is 
Oh, Tiago Alves, Tiago Patrick Alves Cote. versus Cote. Absolutely. A couple of, you know... Pitbull versus the Predator. Couple I'll, of I'll go Cote. Old, old stalwarts of the UFC, you know, been around for a long time, had, you know, a lot of fights. So and Tiago Alves is 26 and 12. Wow. And Patrick Cote is 24 and 10. I'd so experience to, there. Eh? I'd love to know how many of those have been in the UFC too because yeah. both of those guys have dead set... Been around for the pretty much the entire time that I've been watching, which is the better part of a decade. So you know, there's a lot of fights there. Is that at is that at seventy or is that at eighty five? That's a one seventy. One seventy. Oh, nice. So the so both your boy Dolce down. has gotten uh, oh. the pit bull in uh, fighting shape. No, is he still with? Is he, he still I don't with think so. He, Dolce? it wasn't for his last fight, and right. and I'm I'm sad to say that he actually fucking missed weight for his <laughs> his last fight, but. Um, but well, yeah. he's got he's got abs in his picture here, so yeah. let's it, hope it, he's it'll, it'll he's be, bringing the A game. Be interesting to see if Tiago can. Um, no, actually, sorry, that he missed weight for that fight at fifty five. Right. So he, he's obviously going back up to seventy, which is a very good weight for Tiago. Yeah. He, he's obviously made a good choice for his body there, man. How does that one go down? Both a couple of bangers. Like, l- l- let's put it that way. You know, like somebody's both going out. A couple out. of bangers. Um, There's every possibility. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, I think Tiago probably, you know, like looks to use his leg kicks and, and keeps Cote at range like he, he like Cowboy Cerrone did with Cote and he probably gets that one done, you know. But psh, I don't know. What do you think? Could go either way. It's one of those like you know, couple of couple of journeyman fighters. You know, you you never really know. But let's hope it's a fucking barn burner. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull for Alves. I like Alves, but in saying that, I like Cote as well. It's one of those mm-hmm. you know, fucking. It's one of those Rory McDonald, Carlos Condit type fights where it's just like fuck. You're happy, happy for anybody to go down. There is a there's a woman's um, one fifteen fight on that. I've never heard of these no, guys. No, Cynthia Ca- Calvillo and Pearl Gonzalez, both Yanks, but um, well, one of them, one of them on the on the UFC poster doesn't even have or the UFC doesn't website picture, doesn't even yeah. have a picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I mean, we're still sort of like poor. we're we're still yeah, looking yeah. for depth. We're still looking for depth in the in the women's divisions. There's still only two divisions to the men's six divisions. How many we got now? Yeah, six. And there's really, there's really only probably a handful of stars that you've got spread across the two divisions. I so mean, what is that fight doing on the pay per view? Uh, because that, you know I mean? it's, it's a promotional tool. I get that. But yeah, you've got you, it. You've got, got, to, you've got to build it. You got to build it somehow. Put it on Fight Pass. You've got, got to build, build it somehow. Bunch of people at home. Watching I agree. It, watching it for free on Fight Pass. Yeah. That yeah. gets you're, you in. Like, you're only yeah. going to get stars by putting them on TV. You know, that like, um, that uh, fucking hurt business doco that I was talking about on Netflix last episode. Um, there, there's like a couple of interesting comments from current UFC fighters about girl uh, about female. Um, competitors in that yeah. one. Uncle Creepy, uh, fucking Ian McCall, Ian McCall, says some pretty sort of like, uh, you know, he basically says that he, don't, he doesn't think women belong in the no, UFC. No, he's had, been public with that in the yeah, past. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of and people don't like it still as T- fighters Tito too. Ortiz like, as yeah. well. He sort of, he, he has some stuff to say on it. Which but, is um, strange because Tito Ortiz manages Cyborg, you know, like I mean, yeah. so, you know. He's, he's a businessman he, first. He, like, yeah, yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah. Good he point. says something along the lines of like, you know, he doesn't find it attractive or something like that. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. How's it's it? sport, Tito. You're not meant to fucking jack it. You were dating Gemma yeah, yeah. 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 How, <laughs> how are Channel Sonnen's comments to yeah. Tito like it? Oh, <laughs> what did he say? It was like um, he got his come up and seen that fight too. He, he like, did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he copped it, but yeah, he said something. What? Um, oh, uh, yeah. um, uh, t- the something about Tito using his mouth. The only way that like the only person who's ever made money with their mouth is Tito's wife. wife yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> and his uh, ex-wife too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you'd prefer it was your ex to your yeah. current. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Ex, but still the mother of a couple of those kids. <laughs> like, yeah. just hit him right. That's, in the, a, that's yeah. true. That's hit him true. right in the feels. Oh shit, yeah. Oh shit, yeah. Child don't give a fuck though, man. Yeah. Yeah. How, how would you feel knowing that pretty much every dude has jerked off over your wife? Like, oh no, bro. <laughs> and and a bunch of dudes. I it mean, turned me on a lot. Every, <laughs> everybody's everybody's missus has been railed by oh not everybody's but the vast majority of people everyone's missus has been railed by somebody 
But what the fuck to, you got to bring it up for, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to think about that shit. But, like, but to <laughs> know, to, but to know that your missus has been like you can has been active, absolutely schooled. Yeah, yeah. And, on and camera, you, and you can and you can, you jump can YouTube on, it. Like. And you can jump on the internet and watch it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. True. yeah. That's that's some fucked up uh, shit, right there. Yeah, yeah. Is this dude dumping a load on her face? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Those kids have got to go to high school one day. That's yeah, the problem. Exactly, yeah. That's the problem with it. Yeah, oh, they go to they'll go to high school in LA, and LA is weird as fuck, yeah. man. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Belladonna's kids. They're going to grow, up, gonna grow up with a lot of weird fucking they humans ha- around them. They hang out with the porn star kids. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, oh, well, my dad's a porn yeah. star. My mom's a porn yeah. star. Like, Good point. Yeah. And that's how fetish is. Want some acid? Yeah, yeah. Three hundred and thirty million of them currently. Like yeah, they'll probably it. be a you know a yeah. lot more by the time that they grow so up. You want to come? Yeah. You want to come smoke this twenty four percent indica? Like, Ooh, <laughs> shit, way <laughs> <Wipe out. laughs> What's the next fight on that card, man? After the Weidman, after the chicks, Weidman, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Weidman yeah. Musasi. Oh. Damn. Masasi straight out of Syria, like <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. Matty, Matty sent d- around a photo today of a dude that looked absolutely like Masasi. It was he was uh, he was holding his two children after the chemical bomb in what was one of the saddest images you'll ever see. Oh, uh, but fuck, this bloke looked like Gagard yeah, Masasi he though, did, didn't he? he like, is, isn't did. he meant to be in Buffalo cutting weight? <laughs> like, like it seemed distracted, but Weidman is. Sort of gone back to his roots here, but Gay Guard's a motherfucker, though. Is man. it? Is a motherfucker. Fourth, Gay fourth Guard's fights the, fifth. Gay Guard's the uh, the favourite going into this. So Weidman, the underdog. So really, the part of the the Chris Weidman fan in me say that with his back to the wall, I think he can pull out the W. I think yeah. he got caught against Romero. Was doing well in that fight against Joel Romero. That fight. I had him if, winning that fight. If that goes to a decision, he might get that two rounds to one. More than likely, I'd say. Um, but hey, he got caught and knocked out. But with his back to the wall this time, it's uh, it's Chris Weidman all the way for me. I think he'd be too big, too strong. And team Gaygard in this war, yeah. Iran. We've got forty-one six and two for fucking Gaygard's that record. That is an bro. incredible amount. At two hundred five and eighty-five, all the way back. He goes all the way back to to Pride days. You know, mm. like Pride, Strike Force. You know, Dream. He beat Mark Hunt. Yeah, Gagard Musasi beat fuck? Mark Hunt. No way, that's yeah, man. He armbarred Mark Hunt. That's incredible. He, he's fought. <laughs> what weight? He's fought. Heavyweight. Well, yeah. Heavyweight fought it like he was. Well, Gagard weighed in at like two oh five, two oh six, two oh five. He really? was the strike force champion at. You wow, know, like, we. I mean, so you know that, that's went up to heavyweight in Pride and uh, he he tapped Mark Hunt via an armbar. Oh, I'm pretty man. sure. Oh, the, Team Musasi all day. I, I'm I, pulling for him big I, time. I just here. the only way that I can see Gagard getting. You know, having a, a a discipline that's that's and and again, I'll, I'll I'm happy to look like a fucking idiot for saying this post the fight, but he's not going to out wrestle Weidman. That is absolutely not going to happen. He he is not going to submit Weidman. That is absolutely not going to happen. So he really is needs to get it done on the feet. You know, and and Weidman is outstanding on the feet. You know, mm. so like I mean, I just think that. For me, I don't see a clear enough discipline where Musasi has it over him in order to have a win here. You know, like Weidman, like you said, has had a couple of really tough wins in that that Yoel, an Olympic wrestler, did not out-wrestle Weidman. No, he was got getting, taken down by Chris Weidman. Absolutely. Wyden. You know, like he just caught an unlucky knee late in that third round there. Otherwise, he would have had that win. And he and he made mis- that mistake against Rockhold mm. in terms of, you know, throwing that spinning back mm. kick and getting taken down. He was he could have arguably been winning, been winning that fight too. Close fight. We w- only watched that the other day, but I just don't see enough – of mm. an advantage for Masasi to to have a win here, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. No. He is absolutely capable of it. Fair enough, hands down. We we did touch on it last week, but only briefly. But uh, Daniel Cormier is, and still potentially for him to set up the Jones the John Jones fight. I think it. I'd, boy, ha- I'd have to lean your, over, your over boy, five. Yeah, your over, boy. Over, over five rounds. I'd, you'd, I'd probably have to tip Daniel Cormier if someone gives me gives me money, and I and I have to bet. But uh, has AJ ever been five rounds? I don't think no, he has. No, absolutely. I no. don't. I don't think he can go five yeah, rounds personally. Yeah. Uh, and that's coming from me, the biggest Anthony Johnson fan in Queensland. I've, I've been, been on since day one, and I'd like to think that he can come out and tag him and get that W. But the uh, fact that we've never, ever, mm. ever seen it, you know, like, I mean, the yeah, fact yeah. that we've never, ever seen Anthony Johnson with good cardio, it, it really doesn't, it negates whatever he says in the pre-fight talk about, you know, that, oh, this has been the best fight camp ever mm. and I'm in the best shape of my life because you know that in the, 
however many teens or 20s fights that we've seen Anthony Johnson in, he's never had a, a really good cardio performance. That's it. I think know? he might, if, if anything, he might learn, learn from the first uh, occasion where they fought. And at this time, maybe, not that he wasn't in the first fight, but might be more patient, knowing that he can hit DC with his fucking best shot and there's potential that DC can take it yeah. if he doesn't get on the button. Because, look, he, he smashed DC across the octagon in the first with that big right hand that he landed. And wasn't able to knock him out. And DC's probably been the first dude who's been able to take those shots realistically. He's put fucking everyone away. So Yep. And, he, look, took, and he took one of them. That's like, it. You know, like, War, I mean, War Rumble, but I think, I think it's Ant Still. And from a, from a uh, sporting perspective here at 205, whether it's DC or Anthony Johnson that gets that shot at John Jones when he comes back. It's going to sell. Just, that's just dollar bills either way, right? Yeah, so that's true. That's it's, true. It's win-win. I, th- I still maintain that it's bigger dollar bills if it's DC. Like even DC came out this week during the uh, during the the lead up, and because obviously Jones is is has been attending the lead up, and John's going to be there at, at two two ten and all that sort of stuff. Mm. DC's come out and absolutely blasted him for even being there, and and so a big part of me knows that. DC is blasting him at these press conferences and blasting the fact that he's at these press conferences because he's already building the next one. Mm, sure. You know, like, I mean, so he... It is, has to happen. It's, yeah. It has it, to happen. Legitimately yeah. hate each other. Those yeah. Two. yeah they're, they're like, I yeah. fucking can't stand that guy. Exactly. And, and that's from both both sides of the fence too, so... It's win-win, so that, that's a, a great part about Sunday. So oh, it's, bring a, it. it's, it's a great game. They still replay yeah. that like uh, TV interview that they did once they were off air and it was like, you there, pussy? I spit in your yeah. face. Yeah. Like, you there, pussy? You know I would kill you yeah. if yeah. you ever did something like that's that. It. I'm not saying I would beat you up. I'm saying I would kill you. Yeah. Like, they mm, fucking that's, hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when no one's watching. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, no, yeah. They didn't even realise they were on then. It's and, like, no. and that's just, yeah, you're right. That's just two, two individuals going to a really dark spot you know, like being on the on mm. the on the whole, on the phone with someone that you just, you know, is, your blood is boiling at that particular point in time, and you're just like, man, well, as soon as I get my hands on you, bro, like I'm gonna absolutely end your life. I remember watching one of the embedded's where Carlos Condit said that he basically, um, you know, because he had a young family and stuff like that through uh, the sort of GSP fight era and stuff like that. Still, still, obviously, would have a family. Don't know how old his kids are now, but um, he was saying he basically doesn't contact his family like after fight week and stuff or, or like leading up to fight week because he goes to a really fucking dark place. Oh, like, Ramp- yeah. Rampage and he has, said the he same. He has to, to to get into that fight mode so he doesn't want to be seeing his kids and stuff like that. Like he's going into his like, you know, deepest, darkest mm-hmm. parts to come out like, you know, natural well, that's where, born killer. Like, where Weidman... He's like, I saw a watch of the embedded today. DC's got his son on the bus and he's like, I can't wait, man. And Weidman, talking to Weidman and he's like, my kids get here tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. He's like, can't yeah. wait for him to get here, man. Well, yeah. What, what yeah. Weidman's like, wow, the different same. mentalities to yeah. it where it's like, no, I need to go to this yeah. dark place where I'm just a fucking animal where I don't want to know anyone or see anyone or talk to anyone. Yeah. There's yeah. other dudes there just braiding, hey, sweetie. Yeah, bra- bra- <laughs> braiding his daughter's hair after <laughs> yeah. a shower like two nights out from the biff. That's like, it, man. And, and really, I, I suppose it comes down to how quickly you can get into character. Yeah, you know, both a lot, dudes a lot coming of, off losses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No doubt. Maybe you should fuck that fam off. <laughs> <laughs> Get your eye on the fucking prize, dude. You know, DC you know, ain't coming off a Fucking, list. like, remember when um, Connor fought uh, Aldo and he was saying a lot of that shit in the, in the mental warfare game was saying, you know, like... I don't have a fucking wife and kid. This guy's game. This guy's head's not in the game, and all this sort of shit. Like now, now Connor's about to experience some, some like yeah. different he shit. Does now. Man. Like, <laughs> he yeah, does yeah. now, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, it'll be interesting to see what uh, you know how self focused he uh, you know is able to remain. You know, w- with Big a child and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, it, whilst he's working, he's working. I'd say. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think he'd be able to detach, but then again. Fucking or get almost guaranteed you soften you up. I don't know what uh, what he's having, but uh, all of a sudden, little Connor's got himself a little girl fucking running around. It's like, oh, <laughs> hey, sweetie, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just fucking ruins <laughs> him. He, he seems like he would almost, and, and again, we're just hy- hypothesizing, but like, yeah. he seems like he um, would be a guy that would switch in and out of character. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. like I mean, because he, you do see him on the puts on the, a great show, pretty yeah, confident. The, I know his the, mentality. The, the, yeah, the, the Chris, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I know the yeah. guy, right? <laughs> when, we, when we talk on the phone, this is what he tells yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, shit. It seems like a guy that would switch in and out of character and be a bit of a family man and sort of, you know, yeah. and play that part as well as 
you know, it'd all, like Charles Sonnen, it'd all be a character. Mm. It'd all be a front, you know, That's like, it. I mean, for him, for but sure. But you watch those embedded and, embeds and shit like that and even the, the Mac life stuff and you can tell that D is like his butler, basically. Like, it's the Connor show, you know? Yeah. It's not the D yeah. show fucking at all, nah. bro. Like, it's, Hey, D! Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 She's just, it's yeah. like yeah. she's carrying his water bottle. She's got his trunks in her backpack <laughs> at the beach while he's working out. Like, it's yeah. the fucking Connor show. Yeah. So, Did, I don't know, man. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what, um, you know, post, post fatherhood mm-hmm. uh, Connor, Connor turns out to be. But yeah. if he is potentially staring down the barrel of a fucking $100 million paycheck... We might never see the dude again. Like nah, we, we'll might, we again. might only see him in Fast and the Furious Seventeen. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, he's a martial he's a martial artist at heart, and I think that I think that his heart will get him back there, no matter what. And that's that's um, the crazy thing is that if that number is a hundred million dollars, which it probably is, you know, let, let's face it, if, if they could probably negotiate that, especially having you know WGM or, or whoever mm-hmm. they are and the UFC both behind you on that one, if they're taking a cut, even if it ended up eighty twenty. And, yeah. and Connor walked out of it with $20 million. That's still far it, more, far more than le- he would... Legitimate lifetime of cash, so... Far more than he would ever walk away with from any UFC fight yeah. ever. Mm. You yeah. know, like, I mean, mm. so... But is, this, this could, this could be a turning see. point for UFC, you know? There could be Double. some... This could start bringing some, some boxing fans over, you know, and it might start turning some more money. Especially well, if he yeah. beats him, be like, oh, fuck, this dude was Yeah, yeah that's right. Instead of getting laughed at like a lot of boxing experts are... Or like the like, WWE. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see Roman Reigns, man, still like yeah. fucking whoever the fuck that guy and, is. And you see that uh, like, there was I don't know if it was an April Fools or what, but it was like uh, Vitor's retirement fight to be against uh, CM Punk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just wants that money give money to fight him. to leave. Yeah, just give it to give him. It to him. Just, just, did let you see? him maul him. Just a spin. wheel kick like off the, <laughs> off the touch. Let like. Vitor go out like absolute fucking victor. Oh, did you see um Victor did you, Gracie? Did you read about the Gaslam Silver fight today? Obviously Gaslam's uh, yeah. on on your side. Watch list. He's uh, yeah. tested positive Got, to, yeah, to out weed. Of that weed. Out of that yeah, of weed. all things. He tried some of the marijuana. Yeah, yeah. He smoked a bloody marijuana. Yeah, he, did, yeah. he did marijuana. Spe- speaking of greatest, he's a of danger to to everybody in the cage. <laughs> in bad. Greatest of all time, though. I've got a, I've got a shout out for literally the greatest of all time. Un, in my opinion, und, undisputable. Retired at WrestleMania last weekend. Undertaker Did he retire? Absolutely Had his hat and his cloak in the ring and shit Had his last fight Brish you, you, you reminded me of it when you spoke about Roman Reigns before Fuck. Lost Lost his second ever Wrestlemania First one being to Brock Lesnar Who, who obviously was a UFC person F5'd him but, like. Yeah F5'd him But um, but went on an, an enormous streak I want to say that it was pretty he much it was pretty much 21-0 At one stage <laughs> in Wrestlemania there Yeah Man. not that anybody watches re- wrestling for the he record just, but fucking just any, 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 Fuck off any, <laughs> anybody who <laughs> anybody, hard, anybody who grew up through the nineties, fucking and and you know, before we were really granted much of a mainstream fucking UFC, you know, boxing didn't appeal to me. I wanted to see dudes flying off the ropes and mm. it's like a like an entertainment thing, you know, like in The Undertaker yeah. when those lights would go out and you'd hear the fucking hearse Dun. music and the Paul Bearers and shit. His Dun. character was flawless, man. Yeah, he, absolutely. He fucking, and he's withstood the test of time. There's so many other dudes that have fallen by the wayside, flavor of the month styles. But yeah. The Undertaker, somebody who's like, they even had a fucking offshoot character of his like half estranged brother called Kane. Kane. Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He has just been, like I say, undeniably, even if you go through the... I mean, for, for wrestling fans out there, you go through the, you know, like the Hulk Hogan's and the Andre the Giants and the Ultimate Warriors and, and Bret Hart's and Shawn Michaels and all the fucking greats of WWE. The Rock is absolutely in that conversation as well. John Cena. John Cena is right up there Mankind. as well. Yeah, but like all these people, all Steve these people Austin. Let's just name are, not a, <laughs> yeah. are, not, are not on Undertaker's level. Yeah. You know, no, like, no. I mean, Undertaker is absolutely far and away, in my opinion, the greatest of all time in, in wrestling sports mm. entertainment and fucking deserves all the props because like yeah. Danny said, the dude had it, like did it well into his fucking late 50s. Yeah. Night after night. Night yeah. after night, 
On is the he road, late 50s? Definitely yeah, fuck is. You, dude. Yeah, or maybe not late 50s. There's oh, a dude. Put, in your, his, put your bets 50s. down. He'll be I'll, I'll 57. Go, I'll go early 50s. Man, I thought I thought Ben McCormick is 50 and young. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll probably go more like early 50s. But he, all right, discriminating. So if you're a pedo and you're 50, you're yeah, young, but like yeah. he's, he's, yeah. he's definitely been around for you know in wrestling is for he, at least 20, 20, 20 plus years. Young you in know? pedophile terms or wrestling? He's what identify. What is he? What did you say? I said like early 50s. 57. 52. Ah, boom. No, right. Boom, right. Boom, right. Boom. Yeah. Oh, what's he fucking hanging him up for then? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, guys. Got five years up. left in him. Like. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Long that, time retired, that's, mate. That's, that's, that's a, a, a few decades of some heavy oh. fucking roids. I was going to say so the much same fucking, What game. type do you reckon he's on, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> mate, I think, I think if we oh, listen to the type that he's not on. He's definitely. Which wouldn't be a conversation. So true, man. They'd be on like all sorts of fucking, you know, like. But he, like you got to wonder where you go at fifty two. If and, yeah. you know, if you're the Undertaker and you're six four and still ripped and jacked to the absolute tits, what do you do then? Do you just go off and deflate and like what what happens to the body like after half a century of? Well, mm. I heard that um, I was listening to a podcast that um, that the. I don't know, like a few dudes from the Onnit Academy do or whatever. It used to be Aubrey Marx's podcast, but they fucking palmed it on to someone else. And it was like ages back. And they were talking about – and when I say ages back, I mean like a year or two. So Undertaker would have still well and truly been 50-51. They talk about that he trains at that Onnit Academy from time to time. And people have to sort of like – Slow him down Because you know Like they're like Man you're gonna hurt yourself You know Don't yeah. train that hard You know Techniques so. are fucking awful <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly Those exactly. dudes are all on the growth hormone For sure Oh like, yeah Fucking for oh, sure yeah. What's the uh, Skin's way too The quick. great Carly yeah. You ever seen that yeah. dude Yeah yeah He looks like Antonio <laughs> Bigfoot Silver But bigger Yeah he fucking yeah, he's I think he was from guy. India He's a, he's an actor uh, He's an actor as well isn't he I'm pretty sure yeah, He's in the longest yard But that's that's, that's that's an actor He's fine Yeah, yeah. I mean yeah, That's, that's like he can, <laughs> he, he can play a giant Neanderthal That's about it Yeah but how many Fucking You're not gonna see him in uh, Giant Neanderthals <laughs> what, What's the uh, The great Carly In uh, Blood Diamond Now that he's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He plays a South African yeah. journalist Who's like trying to expose The <laughs> The great Diamond Car- trade <laughs> The great Carly as Solomon Vandy. Like, yeah, yeah. Are you a journalist? Where is, yeah. off, uh. Where is the diamond? Yeah, just a real in-depth character that requires a lot of fucking. What's the uh, the over under now that the the takers given it away after all these years? He's done all those roids. <laughs> under or over it? six months that he kills his family. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. You don't Chris get away Benoit. with that for nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Last Go that uh, full on Chris Benoit with the uh, get the extension cord out. <laughs> oh shit, man! That what is a piece a, of shit. That is a horrific story, and that, that is an absolute, you know. Testament to what's wrong with mm. steroid use in in yep. people with head. You know, that's steroid, that's, that's steroid abuse. People Ster- oh. Steroid abuse. We're all talking head about head trauma. Each other here, yeah. by the way. Steroid abuse and head trauma contributed to Chris Benoit, one of the most famous wrestlers in the nineties, going home to his house in Florida or in in the states and uh, getting an ex- extension cord out and choking his wife and two child daughters uh, dead. Before, uh, before killing himself. Before killing himself. You can't so. pinpoint that on steroids, I don't think. I think no, there's that's many true. contributing Droid, factors to that. Hey. Steroids was one of those contributing factors. Mental health, but, head trauma. Yeah. I think it was just a combat cocktail. Yeah. Where it, uh, Swiss he, cheese model. He, he, checked, <laughs> he checked out yeah. hard. So... Uh, with that, uh, we hope you have a, a lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely weekend with your loved ones. and uh, <laughs> Hold your loved right, ones yeah. close. <laughs> wrap this bitch up for the quarter cent. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Jace, fucking many thanks for coming on, man. You enlightened us into the world of, uh, of power lifting and uh, impressed with your efforts and potential return guests too. So. Yeah, thanks very much, okay. mate. I would, uh, would love to come back. Absolutely. It's been good. Chris, Danny. As always, brothers, thank you. Quarter century, we made it. Keep an eye out too. We've got some shit in the works with our uh, good buddy over there in uh, Bogota, Colombia, uh, Zenith Paltrow on Instagram, starting his uh, tattoo game, fucking starting to get real strong. He's looking at uh, designing a few logos for some merchandise and shit too. So Stay tuned. A few return guests lined up, some merchandise. We're fucking really rocking it. 25 will be 100 before we know it. Stay black.